We're out here at a branding today, and there's a lot of hazards going on, and a lot of times you don't have control of that type of an environment. The agricultural industry has a lot of hazards in it. We jump in a vehicle, we run down the road five miles, 10 miles, and most accidents happen within 10 miles of where you live. And so there's really no excuse not to wear your seatbelt. Even though it is a short distance, you need to wear your seatbelt in order to preserve uh, your health and your family's well-being at the end of the day. The seatbelt is a decision you make individually and you're in control of that. So uh, there's not a lot of excuses for not wearing your seatbelt. Embrace comfort throughout the seasons with Northern Arapaho propane and solid waste. Proudly rooted in the local community, supporting Fremont County year round. Your preferred supplier serving enrolled and non-enrolled members. For more information, call 307-463-4185. Today Media. We are once again at Riverton High School. It is a beautiful spring day. We're going to go ahead and wish it was already into full spring, but it is 71 degrees here at Riverton High School. It's actually a bit warm at field level, um, so this will be the first time we have encountered that. And it is time for Riverton High School soccer here on Wyo Today. And welcome to the Hampton Inn and Suites pregame show. I am Kevin Shields, your voice of Riverton Wolverine soccer. I will be joining joined at the end of the middle school day in about 30 minutes or so by the time he walks over here by cameraman Connor. And we are bringing you what we hope will be a rebound game for both the Lady Wolverines and the Wolverines. Bo traveled to Kelly Walsh on Tuesday and in a very cold, overcast and windy day, both teams were shut out. Riverton Lady Wolverines, who will be previewing for this first game, lost three to nothing. They only had two shots on goal. And both of those were offset plays by Cami Paskett. But things don't get easy. As we look at the Jackson Lady Bronx here on the Hampton and Sweets pregame show, we've already gotten to see them one time, um, both the Bronx and the Lady Bronx. Um, and that was when we called the Lander game. Training, uh, helping Austin get up to speed in his first game is calling for Lander Valley. And it was, it, it was a dominating performance by Jackson. Both teams very legitimate. They come in today, do the Jackson Lady Bronx, with a record of 3-1-1. One, and one. Their leading goal scorer, it's a tie between Melissa Morillion and Ruby Holscher. Of course, they are coached by Nate McLennan and Mary Holscher. But they've also gotten goals out of uh, Taya McLennan, Michelle Vargas Ramirez, Caroline Montez and Ella Steinberg on the assist front there, led by Ruby Holscher as well. She has taken by far the most shots, 35. She's gotten 21 of those on goal for a goal percentage of 33%. Melissa Marillion, a little bit better on that end. She's only taken 16, but 10 of them have been on goal. And she's got a goal percentage of 70%. She also has two game-winning goals on the season. As we look a little bit further and look at what we'll be looking like in the keeper position, they are led generally by Harley Rommel. She's played 320 minutes in goal. She's allowed seven, made 14 saves, faced 20 shots. Her record is 1-1-1. One, one, and, one. and as far as Rhina Rhodes, who will be facing today, she's played in three games. She's only played a total of 80 minutes, but she has only allowed one goal. Her goals against average is at one, whereas Rommel is at 1.75. But again, Rhodes will be starting today for the Lady Bronx. We're going to take a break here, pay some bills, and we'll be right back with the Ranger Keys of the Game here on Wyo Today.
Wyoming has locations across Fremont County ready to serve you at Dubois Medical Clinic, Riverton Community Health, and Lander Community Health Pediatrics. We accept all forms of insurance, including Medicaid and Medicare. Are you struggling to get medical care? Ask for their sliding fee scale. From family medicine to pediatrics, community health centers are here to serve you. Call 307-463-7160 or visit chccw.org to schedule your appointment. Your car or truck is an investment. When it needs repairs, you need someone you can trust to do the job right. Take it to Gunners Automotive. They repair all makes and models of cars and trucks, from oil changes to brakes, tires, and more. Gunners Automotive, 856-2288. Papa Murphy's on North Federal in Riverton makes your pizza to order. Order online at papamurphys.com or in-store. Delicious, fresh-made pizza just the way you want it. Papa Murphy's is a proud supporter of our local Fremont County student athletes. When you purchase your car, do you know if you got the best payment possible? The answer is probably no. Oftentimes, your loan is packed with additional charges that can drive your monthly payment higher than it should be, costing you thousands of dollars more for your car. Hi, this is Patty, and here is your second chance to get the payment you deserve. Visit Atlantic City Federal Credit Union today for a courtesy loan review. We've helped our members save money by refinancing their vehicle with us. Now it's your turn. Open your eyes to a credit union. Atlantic City Federal Credit Union. Welcome back to Wyoming Today's coverage of Riverton High School Athletics. It will be the Lady Wolverines of Riverton facing the Lady Bronx of Jackson here. And our keys of the game are do not let Kelly Walsh beat you twice. Kelly Walsh was dominant in their victory against Riverton um, on Tuesday. That was the first defeat for Riverton. It places them at 2-1-1. One, one. Um, but it is not their first game where they have struggled a bit offensively. Of course, they did that in the first game in a tie 0-0. Zero zero. Of course, in Evanston, they scored 7. So it looked like that was kind of all taken care of. But then against Rock Springs, only winning 2-1 to one on a team that in previous years has netted quite a few more goals. They have played a lot of stiffer competition early in the season, and Jackson is no different. So the key is going to be get up early, get up quick, but also is do not let the game on Tuesday defeat you again. So that's the key is the game brought to you by the Ranger. We'll be right back with the Sutherland starting lineups here on Wyo Today. Riverton's Hampton Inn and Suites is proud to sponsor our youth athletics in Fremont County. Fremont County School Athletics provide our youth timeless experiences and lessons that can lead to success for life. Setting goals, teamwork, and hard work make young athletes into good citizens. When repairs are complete after a collision, you expect your car, SUV, or truck to look like new. That's the service you'll receive at Stork Auto Body in Riverton. Professionalism and meticulous attention to detail. You can depend on Stork Auto Body, 841 Miniweb Avenue, Riverton. The choice is yours. Sutherland's Friends of the Family Plus Consumer Credit Card lets you choose from 5% off instantly at the register or special financing on qualifying purchases. That means no forms, no waiting, no rebates. You can choose 5% off instantly with your Sutherland's Credit Card. Got a big project? Choose special financing. The choice is yours with Sutherland's Friends of the Family Plus Consumer Credit Card. Subject to credit approval, minimum monthly payment required. See store for details. Only at Sutherland's. At Teton Therapy, our people make the difference. You can live pain-free. The amazing staff at Teton Therapy can help in Lander and Riverton.
From the wide open spaces to the canyon near you, Wyoming.com is reaching more homes and businesses than ever before. For more than 25 years, we've aimed to provide the best internet and phone service to meet the needs of our customers all across the great state of Wyoming. Now it's getting even better. Wyoming.com, expanding to an area near you. Wyoming.com, we're out there. Bailey's Enterprises is a proud sponsor of Riverton Wolverines football. For over 50 years, Bailey's has become the name you can trust. With pit stop travel centers, you can fuel up and stock up on trip snacks at locations all over Fremont County. You can also put your trust in Bailey Tire and Auto for service and to keep handy for those times when your luck runs out on the road. Refresh at the Speedway Cafe with a dine-in meal or a round of carry-out with a variety of specials to keep you going. Go with Bailey, go Wolverines. And welcome back to Riverton High School Athletics here on Wyo Today Media. It is time for the Sutherland starting lineups. First, for the Jackson Lady Bronx, they will be led in goal by senior Raina Rhodes. Then they'll have senior Madison Kramer, number four, number seven, Tegan Ritter, number eight, Eva Flanagan, number nine, Carolyn Montes. Number 10, Melissa Marillen. Number 11, Ella Steinberg. Number 12, Ruby Holscher. Number 17, Piper Lee. And number 26, Taya McClennan. For your Lady Wolverines, it will be double zero in goal, Ayana Maharado. Number three, Celia Maharado. Number four, Maddie Fossey. Number five, Maya Noseep. Number seven, Taylin Leesburg. Number eight, Cami Paskett. Number 11, Savannah Morton. Number 10, Takeda Yarber. Number 21, Braden Mossbrucker. Number 23, Timbery Mathil. And number 29, Seely Morton. Coaching the Riverton Lady Wolverines, of course, is Coach Wahid. It will be Coach Holsler for Jackson. We'll be right back here with the kickoff on Wyo Today. Want access to local news, sports, events, and more? Download the Wyo Today app. Now available on all platforms. Stream your favorite radio station, submit something to buy, sell, or trade for deals on the dial, or view contests and special coupons. Better yet, the Wyo Today app is the best way to access free HD video of Fremont and Hot Springs County Athletics. It's all at your fingertips. Head to your app store or visit wyotoday.com to download the Wyo Today app now. Wind River Family and Community Healthcare has clinics located in Arapahoe, Ethity, and Riverton. We provide family medical services along with dental, optometry, behavioral health, physical and occupational therapy, and more. Our in-house lab and pharmacy at all locations make for a one-stop primary health care center for your health care needs. Wind River Family and Community Healthcare is striving for a stronger, healthier community because Wind River Cares. More information can be found at windrivercares.com. And welcome back to coverage of Riverton High School Soccer here on WIO Today. It is time for the Riverton Lady Wolverines against the River against the Jackson, Lady Bronx. River comes in 2-1-1. One, one. Very similar. Jackson at 3-1-1. One, one. It will be Jackson kicking off here. They are in their white and black with, it looks like, orange numbers. And Riverton will be in their white and red, or black and red, with white accent on the sleeves and red numbering. Immediately, Jackson on the offensive aggressive. And that's what we saw when we had the opportunity to call them against a lander. Um, in the first game of the season that we did, it was at Jackson. It was a cold day. Well, it turned into a very cold day. And immediately going to try and put one on net. But miss is going to be number seven, Ritter. Seven, a goal kick short from 
Maharado to Morton. Morton. They're going to work it all the way up to Taylor Leesburg. Leesburg going to be double teamed quickly. Goes backwards now to Fossey. Fossey has it stripped away by Holscher. Holscher trying to get open. Stripped back away by Fossey, but sets up a goal, uh, shot attempt. That is going to be stopped. That was McClellan. Fossey was able to get in the way there and deflect it before it went even two feet. 38-53 left in the first half. It will set up the first corner kick of the day. Looks like this is going to be taken by 26. Nope, she was just going to set it up, it looks like. Can't tell who is shooting or taking the corner kick here, but it'll be their first of the day. And here it is. It's going to go right in front of the mouth of the goal, headed away by Riverton, but still in the box, trying to clear it, unable to do so. Leesburg last touches it. It's going to be tracked down by Steinberg, but she is going to have no choice but to dribble it out and over the end line. Trying to lay eyes on who took that corner kick. Um, again, much like when we were there, Jackson with very small numbers. It looks like it was Holscher, number 12, with the corner. After the goal kick, it's immediately taken away. Sorry about not getting the camera there. We're waiting on our cameraman to get here. He'll be here momentarily. Let's try and get you about half the field here. Jackson was trying to make a move, and now they're going to clear it is Riverton, but not get it too far past get along with a steal there. But it's going to be a little too far on that second touch by her and go out of bounds for a throw by the Lady Bronx. Throw is going to be immediately sent out of bounds by Taylor Leesburg, so it'll be a throw by Jackson here. Fossey to Leesburg up to no seep or trying to get into no seep, taken away. Leesburg attempts to steal there. Unable to do so, but it will go out of bounds. It will be a throw for Riverton. It'll be taken by Takeda Yarber. She throws into Fossey. Fossey trying to get it to no seep. Intercepted and taken away by Jackson. Jackson's Holscher trying to work it down towards the left side. Unable to do so as Morton gets the steal. Morton will say enough is enough, and she will send it all the way downfield. Goalie uh, roads way off her line, but does send it back to midfield. I anticipate we'll see Jackson trying to mimic what we saw them play against Lander. It's their style, but also kind of what Kelly Walsh was able to do the other day, which is short control passing. So far, that's what we've seen. And we've seen Jackson with kind of a firm hold, I won't say dominating, but a firm hold on possession early on with 36-17 left in the first half. Thrown by Riverton, stolen away by Jackson. Jackson looking to work their way into the attacking third. They've now done so. Looking to set things up by going back. Now a shot and right to Meharado. That shot was by number 12. That is Holscher. It's her first shot attempt, but easily garnered by, my, uh, by Ayana there. Seeley Morton now with it midfield, trying to work it to the right side. It's going to be a first touch way too far out. No seep trying to put a little pressure on, as is Paskett. Paskett trying to work the ball away, being shielded. Well done. And very physical here between Paskett and McClellan. McClellan, excuse me. Seeley Morton also pressing up, trying to, if this was hockey, you'd call it a four check. Trying to force some possession. They're going to kick it back, but Fossey's going to step right in front of it. Fossey trying to work it to the outside. Was looking for Taylor Leesburg, who looked like she was trying to start a run, but unable to do so. And now Jackson looking to counterpunch, but Yarber's going to get in the way of that. Heads it forward, but right to a Lady Bronk. Then it falls backwards, and it'll be cleared by Timbery Mathill. It'll go out of bounds at around midfield. Jackson with the inbound, looking to come down the right side, now going back towards center. And now they'll back all the way up to the 40 and restart. Passes inside to Holscher. Holscher looking to work down the right near side. 
Holscher gets it to Steinberg. Steinberg cross trying to give it back to Holscher on a little bit of a cut and unable to do so. Holscher had overran it, but they steal it right back. Holscher to, I think that's Ritter over there, and it's going to set up a shot, and it's tipped up and over. So it will be a goal kick there here coming up. That shot was by, I can't read that number for the ponytail to save my life. So corner kick about to take place here. It'll be the second corner of the day. It's going to be taken by, it looks like, Steinberg. It looks like Kramer was with that shot, number four, from way back the defensive line. And the corner is going to go right to Riverton. They're going to take it away. It's all the way up to Cami Paskett. Paskett to Yarber. Yarber's going to lose control of it, though. And here comes McClellan now trying to set up the counter. It's going far right here. It's at Montez's feet. Montez back to McClellan. Looking to go all the way to the left over to Kramer. Almost taking away Holscher has to just bring, excuse me, not Holscher. Can't tell who that was. Actually, the numbers are very small, but intercepted now by Riverton. That was Celia Maharado who just got her pocket pick. She was looking to get past the defender. And now Jackson's got some numbers potentially working here. Going to put it in the box. And Taylor Leesburg's going to say enough is enough and clear it out. She gets it to No Seep. No Seep to Celia Maharado, who's just bumped right off of it. Going to set up a shot potentially for Holscher. Holscher's going to get stripped of it by Savannah Morton. But that's not something Jackson from sending a defensive player up. And we're going to get a whistle. Not sure what the foul was. I know the ball hit the ref, though. But Riverton's going to look to try and push it up. And again, just after one touch, they have a hard time keeping possession. But now they've given it up. They were looking for Seeley Morton there on the right side. Riverton trying to figure out how to keep possession and to string some passes again. And that's been a problem for much of the year. They just haven't had to pay for it very often. Um, they paid a little bit in the opening game, but, of course, that was 0-0. Their defense playing superb, as always. Against Kelly Walsh, they paid for it. Um, that was the first time. And Jackson, um, having seen him once, I'd say they're, they're every bit as capable of Kelly Walsh. Of course, Kelly Walsh came in winless into that game, so a team – the record's not always indicative. Let's hope that's the case today, too, as Jackson is 3-1-1. One, one. Jackson looking to take a long shot, and it's just going to be wide. That shot by McClellan, number 26, from some distance, she had the right idea, just unable to get it inside, and Ayana Maharado had it perfectly played, actually. Maharado on the goal kick winds up right at Jackson's feet, but then it's going to roll all the way towards the end line, and we will do the goal kick all over again. We're almost 10 minutes into the first half. It is zero to 0-0 zero here. A little bit of cloud coverage has given a break from... He's, the heat probably on the field. It was down to about seven. It was up to about 71, 72 degrees. It's probably a little bit cooler now. A little bit of wind. A little, nice little breeze picking up. Jackson trying to work their way down the right side. They wind up feeding it to Steinberg. Can she get to it? No, she can. And it'll be a goal kick for Riverton. Got a substitution now. As 15 and 18, that would be 15 and 18. That would be McConaughey coming in and Gordon for Riverton. Savannah Morton this time going to take the goal kick, and she's got a leg, and she gets all the way out, bounces at the 40, taken away by Jackson, but Cami Pasquet able to get on it, and now she's looking for McConaughey on the far right. McConaughey to Pasquet at midfield, trying to get it back to McConaughey on the far right is Pasquet. She's not able to do so. She turns to the ref. She wants a foul. She's not getting it. 
Celia Maharado now with it, loses control of it, and Jackson will look to try and get a little space on possession, and they will do so. And as soon as they do so, oh, just under the leg of Miley Fossey, it'll maintain Jackson's possession as they work their way down and do the attacking third. Coming to the far right is Holscher. Holscher to gets it to Steinberg, and we're going to get a flag for offsides against Steinberg. Morton going to unleash the boot there. Kicks it to midfield. It does get picked up by Jackson, who will head it. And they'll fight for possession now. Jackson's going to come away with it yet again. They're looking for a streaking Steinberg on the far right. Unable to get it to her. Yarber able to power through one defender. Now looking to send it all the way down. Unfortunately, it goes a little bit to the left and go out of bounds here with 28-15 left. A reminder that our coverage of Fremont County Athletics, we will not be in Star Valley tomorrow. It should be the only, it should be the last game we won't be at for Riverton. We will be at Lander, as Austin will be at our brand new sports director. He'll be back on the 15th, so he'll be back for next week's games. But we will be at Lander versus Powell tomorrow here on Wyo Today. It will be at Lander, and it will be a lunchtime kickoff of noon. as Lander looks to continue their defense of home field. Jackson now working on the far side, works all the way down to the attacking third, harassed by Mathil, and they have to turn around and back up a little bit. Nicely splitting two defenders. Shot is put on Mejorado, and it is stopped. This shot by Holscher. Fourth shot of the day. Riverton hasn't seen the attacking third as of yet. As they fight for possession midfield, Mathil comes away with it. Gets it to Celia Maharado. To Noseep. Noseep going to be shoved right off the ball. Mathil able to get a hold of it. Gets it over to Yarber. Yarber was looking to get to Taylor Leesburg, but it is taken away and it'll be put out of bounds by Yarber with 26-19 left in the first half. Ball's going to go out of bounds. Last touch by the Lady Bronx. It'll set up a throw in. Jackson with that short, crisp passing. Thought about a long shot, I think, but they decline. Gets it over to McClellan. And a long pass going to be put on, and they're going to call offsides. This one is again on Steinberg, number 11. Right off the goal kick, stolen away, kind of been the story of this game so far. Looking for Steinberg, and she had it. She just it just got away from her, unforced error, if you will. Now it'll be a throw in. Yarbrough will take it. And we have a collision or a bit of one. Steinberg with it, and they're gonna not let him play the advantage. It's gonna set up a free kick. This foul is against number 17. Be a first of the day against Riverton, but that will be against Vargas, who had checked in. He'll set up a free kick. This is going to be taken by Holscher. 
Holster from the 10-yard line, about 20, and with the angle, probably about 22 yards away. Free kick, she's going to put it right on goal, and it's good. That was impressive. Comes with 24-15, unassisted. And it is one to nothing. Let's get the scoreboard updated. Connor can't get here soon enough. I've seen them letting him go. So he should be up here shortly. I'll put it on the wrong team there, Kevin. All right, we got it squared away. And Riverton now, it's now even more important. It's been about four quarters now that they have really struggled with possession, especially getting it and possessing it in just the other half of the field. They've been playing defense quite a bit, and now maybe they got something going. They're trying to sneak in. They get it to basket. She is going to dribble around, and she's instantly going to an answer. She is instantly answered. As soon as we said they needed it, they got it. Beautiful passing. The assist will go to Maya Noseep. Happened at 23.52. So literally 23 seconds later, Riverton answers with a big wake-up call. Good short passing, possession, came all the way down and then found Paskett on the wide open look. Only the goal between her and, as they used to say about the Atlanta United player who led the league in scoring the year they won the MLS Cup, things just in that situation slowed down for him, and that's exactly what you could see with Paskett. She was able to easily not rush it, make the goalkeeper commit, and then score. So 1-1 one, one here. We had a goal scored by both teams within half a minute. 27-22 left in the first. And this one's going to go out of bounds. It will be a throw by the Lady Wolverines. And lo and behold, I do see cameraman Connor. Ball is basically thrown straight up. And, but it's going to be headed downfield about five yards further downfield. Mossbroker will take the throw here. Mossbroker throws. It goes off the head of Kramer, and it'll be a throw about 30 yards down the field now. Nope, they're going to say it last touch, Riverton. Throw in intercepted by Leesburg. Leesburg trying to put it forward where she thought Riverton might be, but just no one there, no one setting up there. Jackson looking to turn. Now it's sent forward, and it's going to be offsides on Cami Paskett just by probably the width of a hair there was the offsides call. Now they'll bring it up, free kick. Again, we had a goal at 24-15 by Jackson. Less than 20, 30 seconds later, Riverton answers. All right, we're joined by cameraman Connor. Tell him hi, Connor. Hi. A little bit more enthusiastic than that. Hi. All right. Stolen away by Riverton, and Fossey's just shouldered horribly. And Coach Wahid is furious, absolutely furious, and he has every right to be. Referee's waving him off, telling him. I, I don't know what he's trying to tell him, but I can tell you he's not making a whole lot of sense. That was a hockey-style shoulder-on-shoulder check. There's nothing clean about it. And the referee's just going to continue to just ignore it, I guess. He's going to go over and talk to his coworkers, we'll call them. And, um, hmm. And according to some of the fans out here, the referee told Coach Wahid to simmer. 
basically to simmer down. Uh, no, you just watch Maddie Fossey get crushed. Of course, she's a tough cookie, so she bounces back up. So anyway, we're back in play, and Jackson's looking to push things. This is McClellan, McClennan, excuse me, not McClellan, McClennan coming down. It's stolen away, though. Lost by Jackson after the steal. They get to Morton, does Riverton. Looking to come down the right side. Yarber with it. Yarber trying to get Celia Matarado. She goes and gets it and just says it's mine. Matarado looking to turn. And it's going to go off of a Jackson player who holds their shin as they go down. As it looked like they both kicked the ball at the same time. She is coming up with a little bit of a hitch in her giddy up, so to speak. Celia Morton will now check in. She'll come in for Maya Noseep. 23. Minutes, 37 seconds left in the first half. Riverton on the throw to Paskett. Paskett trying to pop it over the defender and run for go get it. And she does at least force it to go out of bounds. So it'll be a throw in for the Lady Wolverines at approximately the 25-ish yard line. Throwing is to Paskett. She looks to go up and over. It's kind of been one of her signature moves. Unable to do so, but it's going to fall right to Gordon. Gordon's going to bring it up. Try and get over to the right side to Seeley Morton. Morton for Decada Yarber. Yarber up in the attacking third. Gets rubbed off the ball quite easily there. And it's stolen away, but there's nobody there. And they're going to say... Hey, they're going to say she's got to come out, the girl who's been limping. Coming in will be uh, the other Steinberg. This one will be Lily. The one who's been in the game has been Ella. Lily Steinberg will come in for Connor. Can you, is that number seven? Limping off the field. Yep. That is number seven. That will be Ritter. So the throw put in the box over the goalie's head for a second, and she has to reach back for it as Paskett was running on. Interesting play there, and and they're having a chat with Paskett. I did not see her make contact with the keeper, and now... I don't even know what that was for. Uh, referee took the ball from the keeper, held it, then dropped it at her feet, and then let her pick it up. So anyway, ever since the goal, Riverton's had a little bit, or Jackson's had a much harder time possessing it in the attacking third. Let's see if that continues here as we're now halfway through the first half. McLennan, McLennan with the ball now having to curve back over the 50 and back into the offensive half for Jackson. Gets it to Holscher. Holscher looking to go to the right. Cut off. Riverton trying to steal it. Now putting it towards goal and cleared out there. Ball's going to wind up going over the end line. It will be a goal kick. It'll be the short one. It gets Phantom Morton. Morton brings up, gets it no seep, no seep to Mossbrucker and back to no seep. No seep trying to get it downfield for Paskett. Unable to do so. The defense plays it well and will look to try and get rid of it, but misplayed horribly there by number 17, that being Lee. And it'll be a throw in. Leesburg throwing for no seep, and she misplays it to give it right back to Jackson. Two unforced errors, so to speak. And it will be Jackson's ball as they'll try and push down the right side. Holscher with it, trying to go out for uh, Ella Steinberg. Unable to do so, but fortuitously goes all the way to the left and goes to the Jackson player on the far 
left. They get to Holscher. Holscher's going to try and line it up. Shot blocked by Gordon. They'll get it back to Holscher, though. She'll take this one. It's on target. No, it's not. Just wide. Now Riverton with it. They're trying to get a basket. They do so, but they're able to double team her and force her wide to the left. I'll say it was last touch by Jackson, so it'll set up a throw. Let's see who's going to take this. It's going to be Taylor Leesburg. And misplayed their Jackson looking to go all the way down, but they signaled no, the referee over, overruled the guy on the side. He was pointing down for a corner. They're going to say a goal kick here. And it winds up right with Paskett. Paskett, the shot off the crossbar. I don't think she was ready for it. She got a great shot on it. She just all of a sudden looked, and here, here it was. Set up another goal kick. Don't think they'll make that mistake again. This time they go short. And we have a whistle. This time it, taken by a defender. It's sent all the way past midfield. Fossey steps in front of it. Fossey gets run over. That was more, a little bit more legitimate. She was making a play on the ball, so was the other player. She's holding the back of her head right now. It will go out of bounds. I do believe it's going to go out to Riverton. Morton going to take the free kick. Tries to send it down. It is blocked about 30 yards downfield from going any further. Jackson takes it away, but it winds up going rolling all the way to Morton. Morton to Meharado. Lost it, but Meharado gets it back, going out for Seely Morton. Morton trying to come down the right side, puts it forward. Morton, uh, Seely, Meher Celia Meharado, excuse me, able to get to it and forces Jackson to kick it out of bounds, so it'll be a Riverton throw deep in Jackson Lady Bronc territory. Substitution here is Decatur Yarber will come back on. Throw in is to All of a sudden, my allergies kicking. Watery eyes. I think that was Cecilia, but I'm not 100% sure on the throw in, though, as a last touch Riverton. Yarber tries to get to it, unable to do so. Maharado had it for a second, but now Jackson's come away with it, and they've got a little room to run. They kind of eliminate that momentum for the time being on a pass that went a little off target, but now they've got things on the right. They've got Ella Steinberg. Steinberg looking to go around the right, around the defender, able to do so, but matched up. Some real good physical play by both players right here. It's last touched by Steinberg herself. It'll go out for a throw as Talon Leesburg will come back in. She will come in for McConaughey. McConaughey, excuse me. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Maybe not. Throw in by Riverton. It's going to be hit midair by a Jackson midfielder and will go out of bounds. It'll be a throw by Riverton. Throw in, winds up getting headed out, I think, by the same player who just kicked it out of midair. 
Um, this one goes back to about right where the last throw was. 12 minutes left in the first half. It's been a very hard fought just trying to set possession and get shots by both teams. Jackson had a little bit of an edge early on and then scored to give it a big edge based on the shot factor. But then 28 seconds later, Cammy Paskett answered. Throw it, taken by no seat. She tries to push downfield. It's going to be tipped out of bounds by Jackson Lady Bronx. And we know one of the coaches for Jackson came up and asked um, when I was sitting in my car. Kind of scared me. Taken by Paskett. Now we'll get back to that thought. Trying to find no seep on a run. Unable to do so. And no seep will take it off the side of the shoulder. It'll go out of bounds, so it'll be a throw. So uh, I do believe it was one of the coaches. It may have been one of the parents. Knocked on my window in my truck because I do have the magnet saying why of today media. Scared the bejesus out of me because <laughs> I wasn't looking in that direction. Didn't even see him walk up. And uh, asked if we were going to be broadcasting. He was going to let everybody know uh, the parents back home. So if you're in Jackson Hole or the surrounding area and you're listening in and watching with us today, we welcome you. It's going to be kicked all the way back. Savannah Morton able to get a hold of it. Trying to get to Leesburg. Does. Leesburg double team, though, and it's going to be taken away by Holsher. Holsher coming down the right side. McLennan. They're going to say she's onside. McLennan looking to cross, put out there. Ooh, Morton able to get a hold of it and somehow smartly didn't carry it towards goal but left it where it was laying, but still a dangerous play there. Um, it was very close to being offsides on McLennan. Foul there signaled against. Jackson, so it'll lead to a free kick. Foul was against Steinberg. Riverton trying to get it into the box and set up a scoring play, and it's going to lead to a corner kick. And we will see Savannah Morton take the long run up there as per usual, or more often than not, shall we say, to take the corner. Riverton being outshot 6-2 to two right now, but we're all knotted up on the scoreboard with, is that nine minutes, Connor? Hmm? Yeah. Nine minutes, 27 seconds. Morton going to take the corner here a little bit low. Falls a little bit short, I think, of where she wanted to, but they get it back to her. Savannah Morton now with it. She's going to take a crack on goal. She's going to be just saved there nicely by Rhodes. At the 9.04 mark is when it happened. First save of the day for Rhodes. And now quickly Jackson looking to counter here in the last quarter of the first half. Timry Mathil able to step in front of it. Puts out for Decada. Decada trying to get it to somebody on the inside. Nobody there. Taken back away by Jackson. Jackson will get it to... Marillon. Marillon looking to put it out. I think that's Steinberg over there, but it's going to go over and it will be a goal kick for Riverton. Looks like Maharadi was going to take this one herself. Gets a little bit under it and taken by Jackson. No seep and Celia, excuse me, Decatur Yarber over there trying to take it away. No seep coming into it. Along with Celia Maharado. Throw in after it goes out off Riverton. Jackson able to secure it. Gets past Fossey. Lays out. They're going to look to set up the shot here. Nope. They're going to have to kick it back. And now there's the shot and it's way high. This one by Holscher. Of course, Holscher does have the game. I mean, the goal of the game for Jackson. Came off a set piece, beautifully done, from the corner of the box, just outside of it, obviously, by about four yards, and just cracked it, um, put it exactly where it had to be. Iana Maharado, this time going short. 
got it up to Mossbrucker, and as she looked to pass it to Vargas, it will go out of bounds. It'll be a throw for Jackson. So now it's starting to get a little bit more like the first uh, 10 minutes or so where Jackson had it in the attacking third quite a bit. Mathil marking her woman there and forcing a pass back. Holscher is going to get it on a pass. Now she's going to look to go right now left. Sitting in the center, cleared, but just momentarily as it's only cleared out for Yeomans. We'll send it back to the left. Now looking to come across center. Fossey able to get one foot on it, unable to control it. Holscher trying to get open. Blocked there yet again, this one by Gordon. And we are camped out here near the box. This is not good for Riverton. They wind up getting someone open. Unable to get a good crack on it there was Jackson. It'll be cleared out of bounds around the 20. And right now, Riverton is definitely playing with their back on their heels. Paskett coming back in now. She's taking a little bit of a breather. Winds up at McConaughey's feet. Over to Celia Maharado. And it's going to go over the end line. It will be a corner for Jackson. And that will come with how much time, Connor? 5.30. Five and a half minutes, as you heard the young man say. They're going to set up the corner. It looks like it's going to be Hoshler number 12, going all the way over to take it. She's taken one, and Steinberg's taken one. This will be the second one for Hoshler. Holscher, excuse me, on the day. She's going to put it towards the bottom. Maharada trying to get up on it. Leaves the goal open, though. And a shot is going to go wide right. There she left the mouth of the goal open. Did get a hand on it. And then good defense there of by Mossbrucker. Able to keep number, is that number 20 down there at the 25? The closest one to us, Connor and White. 20, 20. Okay, that was a shot by, we're trying to lay eyes on it. And I don't have them down, so let's go to our handy-dandy roster here. We don't have them there either. Number 20 is probably going to mayor. And looking to counter now is Riverton. Basket giving chase, but it's going to be kicked all the way back to the goalie. Mayor on the, uh, is listed on the JV roster as a sophomore defensive player. Goalkeeper gets it out for Jackson. It's towards midfield. It's going to go out of bounds. I think Nope, Savannah's going to save it. Morton to Yarber. Goes a little too hard off her. No seep now trying to get the steal. And Jackson's going to get possession of it and look to move past midfield here as we go under four minutes to play. Back to Fossey off through the steal by Celia. Trying to get it up to pass. It can't do it. On a long pass as it's deflected. Nice steal there by Seely Morton, I do believe, on the far side. She's looking to cross it. it crosses between and too far from either. Maya Noseep and Cammy Paskett behind Cammy, way in front of Maya. And Jackson comes away with it. Jackson looking to push down the right side, taken away by Gordon. Gordon. Gordon's got some room to run now, and she's going to get it up to Yarber. Yarber with one touch off the sideline, trying to get back to Gordon. Gordon overruns it, taken by Jackson. Jackson looking across. Fossey going to step in front of it, kick it out of bounds about the 45-yard line as we go under three minutes to play in the half. Substitution here, and... Kind of an odd one. I'm just saying odd one as Lee will come out. And coming back in will be Ritter. And Ritter is definitely favoring the leg. She's still kind of hopping, um, doing a little bit of a skip instead of a stride and a run. And, and uh, hate to see that right now. I'm not necessary that she need to be in at the moment. Um, good player statistically, not not – all world though and she is having a hard time and immediately they're going to take her out they gave it a go and good good on them lee is coming right back in 
and she gave it a go. Coaches get Holscher gave her a chance to get out there and see if she could do anything, but it's just a little too much for right now. Hope nothing but the best. Stolen away by Riverton. Riverton trying to get it to, to uh, pass it, but there is, it's, again, these long passes, and no one is letting them by. Um, and we've seen that for the whole season, with the exception of the Evanson game. Going down and kicking it out and kind of, I don't know if it, the first touch was just played a little bit too hard by Mossberg. She had room to get it to one of her teammates and to get it cleared rather than dribbling it down and out of bounds. But it looked like that first touch was just a good bit too hard. And it winds up for a throw here as we're under a minute and a half. Throwing is just going to be need. And it's going to go out for a throw as close to the corner as you can pretty much get. They're going to let her throw it way ahead of where she should have been. Looking at the current, McLennan gets it, and they put it towards goal. It was looking for, I think, a run there. It was more of a pass than a shot, and there was just nobody there. So go out for a goal kick. We're under a minute to go in the first half. We had an extremely exciting 30 seconds. Uh, the rest has been mainly Jackson on the attack, but uh, there have been times where it's just been fighting and fighting and fighting for possession at around midfield. Uh, Jackson's possession ownership basically has come here in the last eight minutes or so and in the first ten minutes. They were Riverton there looking for Cammy Paskin on a long run, unable to get it to her. As we go under 20 seconds, the throw takes place. Stolen by Noseep. Fossey looking to put it on. Decada Yarber's going to try and make a run on this with 14 seconds left. Yarber able to get past, but it's going to go out of bounds. It'll be a goal kick, but I don't even think that kick is going to happen. Uh, mistake by the keeper there. Rhodes coming way off her line. And it almost cost them here in the waning seconds. But that is the end of the half. Here with your score, one to nothing at Riverton High School as the Lady Bronx strike first. Riverton answers immediately afterwards. We'll be right back with the United States Marine Corps halftime show here on Wyo Today. High Plains Power is a Touchstone Energy Cooperative. What does that mean for you as a Rural Electric Association member? It all comes down to seven principles. Open membership, one voice, one vote, member benefits, independence, education, cooperation, and community. To understand how it all works, we're headed back in time. In 1879, electricity was in major cities, but rural areas were out of luck. In 1935, President FDR made it possible for companies to build power lines to unserved areas. By the time we hit 1941, some 400 electric co-ops had been organized to serve rural America, just like High Plains Power. For more information, visit highplainspower.org. We believe that everyone deserves a second chance, including us. Hi, I'm Brian Robacher, CEO of Atlantic City Federal Credit Union. And if we said no to you in the past, I'm asking you for a second chance too. In the midst of everything happening, we are committed now more than ever to second chances and when it comes to your finances. An auto loan for your new car, business loans, home loans, and more. Give Atlantic City Federal Credit Union a second chance to give you a second chance. We've been helping our community thrive since 1964, and now it's your turn. Visit AtlanticCity.coop to apply today. Atlantic City Federal Credit Union, federally insured by the NCUA. Wyoming Waste hopes that all Fremont County sports teams dismiss their opponents like Wyoming Waste dismisses your trash. They offer services from roll-off cans, commercial, and residential garbage. Wyoming Waste Services, Fremont County, Hot Springs County, Washakie County. They are open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Please call 307-856-5354 or stop down at the Riverton office, 730 South Broadway. Wyoming Waste wants to wish everyone in Fremont County good luck in their sports this year. If your vehicle needs repair, you can depend on the crew at Extra Care Auto Repair. They can repair almost anything with wheels, gas, diesel, domestic, or import, and their work is top quality and reliable. Extra Care Auto Repair on North Federal in Riverton.
And welcome back to the United States Marine Corps Halftime Show here on Wyo Today Media. It is one-to-one here at halftime between the Lady Wolverines and the Lady Bronx on the United States Marine Corps Halftime Show. And Jackson led with possession early and late, unable to do anything with the late possession, did wind up getting a goal by Holscher, number 12 at the 24-15 mark on a 22-yard free kick. Now, here's where the fun part got down. At that point, the Jackson had dominated possession. You would expect that this could be a Kelly Walsh situation again. It was very tedious going into it, but boy, did Riverton answer right off the kickoff, and they got the ball to Maya Noseep, who then hit Cammy Paskett on a beautiful about 14-yard pass, catching her, and she was able to get around the goalie and score 28 second or excuse me not 28 why i keep saying 28 it was 23 seconds later with 2352 left in the half now the unfortunate part and what some things that riverton needs to clean up is they were outshot seven to three pass it with the goal of course she also had a free kick that was off target um and she also had a, or savannah morton also had a shot inside the box and was stopped a by the goalie roads for Jackson. They have put seven shots, as I said, on target Four of those by Holscher. That's who they're looking to feed. But, but McLennan, Kramer and Ritter all with shots on goal as well. As far as other stats go, uh, River, Riverton's been called for offsides once by Cammy Baskett. Um, Jackson's been called offsides twice, um, both on Steinberg, Ellis Steinberg. And as far as fouls go, each team has been whistled for one, one against Steinberg for Jackson, and one against Vargas for Riverton. Corner kicks, three corner kicks have been struck by Jackson, only one by Riverton, none of which have found any kind of scoring opportunity of note. So just a reminder, the boys' game will follow immediately after the girls' game comes to a conclusion. And it will, of course, be tomorrow, Lander and Powell here on YO Today. And then Austin's back, so fans of Riverton are like, oh, you're not going to the game tomorrow. I've had to kind of pull double duty, me and Cameraman Connor, and split some games so we could get everybody covered as best as possible. With Austin returning on Monday, he'll be back with Lander. I'll be back with Riverton. We should be good uh, through there. We do have hotels booked at Regional in Star Valley. Beautiful area, just not the greatest place for hotels, so we booked it oh, about five months ago um, when we knew when we were confirmed that that's where regional is going to be. And, of course, state, if either Riverton team makes it, will be in Rock Springs this year, so we look forward to that. We've got to pay a few bills. Of course, soccer doesn't have a lot of timeouts where we can get some commercials played, so we're going to play those now, and we'll be right back with the second half here on YO Today. You need an oil change, but you don't have a lot of time. Expressway Lubes on South Federal in Riverton and Highway 789 in Lander provide a fast, professional lube oil and filter change. Expressway Lubes, locally owned and proud to support our local student-athletes. The staff and board at the Fremont County Fair wish to thank everyone who attended the fair this year. Whether you enjoyed family day, a night event, entered a craft show, or showed your livestock, thank you for all your efforts. We'll be moving and grooving next year, so stay tuned. Riverton Blowdorn Lumber is proud to support youth sports. Experience the Blowdorn difference. Quality products, design, delivery, and expert service. Blowdorn Lumber, 1202 North Federal in Riverton. Blowdorn Lumber.
do you need a midday pick-me-up? Lander Coffee Company serves delicious fresh roasted coffee, tea, and other drinks. Come to think of it, why not start your day with their quick, healthy breakfasts, like one of their famous acai bowls or maybe a breakfast burrito? Just need a quick snack? They got you. Stop by, fuel up, and enjoy at 1255 Main Street in Lander at the Lander Coffee Company. Quality in Thermopolis offers great rates, a convenient location, standard room, and family rooms with bunk beds. Choice hotel members earn points while you stay. Quality in is proud to support Fremont and Hot Springs County student-athletes. Head to Nana's Bowling and Bakery in Dubois for Family Fun Night. Now booking parties for all ages and occasions. To reserve your company, family, or birthday party, call 455-3660. Nana's Bowling and Bakery is proud to support Fremont County student-athletes. For more than 60 years, RTL Point S has been installing quality tires and offering expert vehicle service in Fremont County. With two locations on South Federal and West Main in Riverton, RTL Point S is proud to support our Fremont County student-athletes. If you're planning home improvement projects, look no further than Valley Lumber. They provide nothing but the best from lumber, power tools, hardware, paint, plumbing supplies. If you need it, they have it. Valley Lumber at 290 North 2nd Street in Lander. B&M Septic and Excavation offers prompt professional service. Call them today for a quote at 850-2200. They serve far and wide across Fremont County and deep. B&M Septic and Excavation is proud to support Fremont County sports. Overhead Door Company of Riverton and Lander is your premier dealer for quality windows and doors, featuring quality brands like Anderson, Colby, Larson Storm Doors, and more. Overhead Door Company is proud to support our Fremont County student-athletes. For a place, a people, an idea, for right and freedom for liberty and justice for all. For every square inch between fruited plains and spacious skies. Marines fight to win. See all the battles Marines fight to win at marines.com. Welcome back to Wyo Today Media and Riverton High School Athletics here live from Riverton High School on an absolutely gorgeous, we're going to jinx it probably and call it a spring day. It's 75 degrees out now. It's nice and cool here in the press box or lukewarm at best. I shouldn't say cool, but Riverton, well, they'll flip going different directions now. Riverton going left to right, right to left for Jackson, and we are underway. Riverton with the kickoff. They're going to look to try and get it on a streaking Timbery Mathil, unable to do so, but stolen away by No Seep. No Seep trying to put it up for Pasket. Pasket going to look to fight. She's held off for a second. She stumbles there. Uh, looked like she just lost her footing. Now they they have been letting them play physical, or I shouldn't say they. He um, in soccer. Fossey able to steal it away. Riverton trying to get something going here quickly in the second half, but stolen away by Jackson. Jackson will look now to counter. A couple short passes and they've got something looking. They're going to go for a long one, and they've got it to McLennan. McLennan looking to get open for a shot. Unable to do so. Takes it back. Puts it on. No good. And I've really got to stop calling this like basketball. No good. She misses to the wide right, so not a shot on goal, but McLennan with her Second shot, no, actually her first shot of the day. And I've got it marked at the wrong player, so we'll get it. That is her second of the day. I had it on Yeomans on this soccer score sheet. Riverton now a little bit more directed passes, but stolen away out by Holscher. Holscher was looking for the long pass there. It was 
deflected by Riverton. Riverton's going to kick it out of bounds. It will go over on a throw to the Jackson Lady Bronx. Thank you to our board op, Katie, or who's been our board op before, not for soccer. We don't need one for that. Uh, but thank you to her for bringing me and Cameraman Connor some drinks. She's a good daughter, along with Cassie, because Cassie's the one who brought him up. So now Riverton trying to pull things and go to the far right. Fossey was looking for Yarber. Unfortunately, it's just a little too hard. It goes out of bounds for her. Throw-in is going to be straight to Yeomans. She's taken on by no seat. Got it to Vargas, but then it went right back to no seat. And then back to Vargas, who's trying to come down the near side. And Fossey is going to poke it out of bounds. It will be a throw for the visitors in white, black, with orange numbers. Does look like, and I'm glad for this difference, that the white, uh, the numbers for the boys, as I'm seeing for Jackson, are going to be black. It'll make it a little bit easier to see them. The orange here, especially in a beautiful sunny day, is a little, it's one, they're a little small, and two, they're a little hard to see. Ball goes off of Vargas. We'll get our first substitution. It will be Seely Morton coming in for Maya Noseep. Throw in is going to wind up with Pasket. Might be taken away. It is, but it's going to be ran right out of bounds by Kramer. So it looks like Rommel has now come in in goal, by the way for Jackson, and on the throw-in, it's stolen away by Holscher. Holscher looking for Steinberg on the far side, intercepted by Riverton's Fossey. Fossey to Leesburg, back to Fossey. Fossey at the 25, trying to make a move, does so, and it's going to be kicked out of bounds. They'll say it was last touched by Riverton. Throw in, taken away by Leesburg. Leesburg, Fossey's going to have to pop it up. It's going to go under the foot of the Jackson player. And Celia Maharado trying to push her way through, unable to do so. But Jackson does kick it out, and it will be a throw here in the attacking third for Riverton. Throw in, taken away, and ooh. Pasket is going to get called for the foul there. Exceptionally rough. Pasket at 30, what is that? 35 37 is going to get the yellow. Kata Yarbrough will come in for, and we've got a player hurt for Jackson. It is number 16, I think. Well, Connor, can you tell the number on that? I think it's, it's 14 or 18. or What is the number on her jersey and her shorts? Well, look at it, please. It's 12 or 10. 12, and that is Holscher, who is not the most prolific scorer, I don't believe, but is, oh, let's make sure I'm saying that correctly. She is kind of how er, who everything goes through, though. They play through Holscher, number 12. She does have seven goals on the season. She is tied with Merlin for the most. She has the most shots. She's not overly efficient at her goal percentage, but she does have a uh, the most assists on the team as well, so... Marillen, a little bit more efficient and true just goal scorer. Holscher kind of the all-around, and she is out uh, seeing the trainer at the moment, and Jackson is trying to push forward. It's going to be cleared now, but only for a few moments. Intercepted by Mathil as they're trying to get it back into the attacking third. Mathil, one of the more physical players for Riverton, able to put up with some of the beating that the Jackson just as a team plays physical. Riverton's got several players who do. 
Jackson leading across, intercepted yet again by Mathil. Or I shouldn't say Cross was looking to go to the near side. Taken by McConaughey, or McConaughey. And goes out of bounds. It'll be a throw. This one going to be taken by, I think that's Flanagan. And Jackson will look to work it all the way over to Ella Steinberg. 34 minutes to play. Only one shot taken by anybody so far in this half. Riverton back playing on their heels a bit. Steinberg looking to cross. It's intercepted. They'll clear it for a second. Yarber, the one lone forward, trying to get free, does, and they're going to really. Okay, they didn't let her play the advantage. They called the foul, and at first, Yarber turned around like they're calling it on me. So that foul is going to go against number four. Morton will, nope, it won't be Morton who comes all the way up. She does come up, but she doesn't take really the kick per se. Seeley Morton does. Fossey tries to take it back, and now Jackson trying to work down the near side. Fossey steps in front, and it's going to go out of bounds. They will say it is, don't know. They haven't seen it so far. The side judge did. But the head, the guy whose opinion matters on this hasn't. He's going to go with what's on the field. Paskett is going to come in for McConaughey. Thrown in, Mathil trying to steal it back. This time, she can't do it against Marillin. Marillin to McClennan. Pass off back to, McL back to McClennan. Force out, and they're going to get Mathil, uh, no, excuse me, Seeley Morton there with a foul. And will set up a free kick from the 21-yard line. 31 yards from Paydirt. Yeah, they're going to make you back further up, Cammy. They're going to make you back up further, Cammy. Oh, no, they're not. She, McClendon tries to put it on goal, and she is wide right. Her second shot of the half, and it's going to miss wide. Set up a goal kick here for Ayana Meharado. A reminder to call the Ranger. If you've got a kid graduating, we know there's several on the field right now um, that are playing in their last season at Riverton. A reminder that we do have parent slash guardian rates in the grad magazine. It's a beautiful book put together by the Ranger and Y of Today Media and the radio stations as well. Everybody has a part in it. Full glossy magazine. We've got parent rates if you want to have an ad congratulating them or embarrassing your child for that matter because that might be the route that me and Connor here take as uh, his sister, my daughter, Katie, graduates. Uh, um, you know, so if you've got that embarrassing photo from when they were three years old and want to print it, and we're looking right at Kelly Davis, because I'm guessing Logan Davis has some three-year-old embarrassing photos out there. What a better way to preserve it than in the 2024 Why Today Media graduation book. So just give us a call if you're interested, 307-856-2244 um, today. Free kick there taken by Riverton. Sales, as it always does, Savannah Moore, unless, unless the good Lord above her has sent a lot of wind, she gets a good leg on it. Unfortunately, taken away by Jackson. This is McLennan She's coming down the left side. Gets up. I think that might be Vargas, but I can't see the number. This is number 10. It's Marillin. Marillin back to McLennan. McLennan's probably going to try and set up for a shot, but cut off, taken away, and it's at least cleared partially by Mathil. At least out of immediate danger, but here they come again. And Morton able to step in. At least gets it 20 yards out, but had such back English on it, it bounces back towards the goal. Taken away by Jackson. Kramer with it, wanting to go all the way out to the right to Steinberg. It's going to go out of bounds. Should be off Jackson. Uh, and as soon as I say that, it is signaled to go the other direction. And there goes down the net behind the goal. <laughs> it's falling down. I don't think the wind's that. Well, yeah, the wind is picked up evidently. 
throw in here by Jackson. Throws it in the box. Morton able to head it towards getting out of the box. Unable to get it out, though. Fossey will get it to Celia Mejorado. Goes off her foot and out of bounds on the far side. With how much time, Connor? Uh, 29-15. I should have had you. Kelly Davis is trying to say the clock and Connor's like hey that's my thing it's the only time we can get him talking number two I can't see the minutes because of the right goal post of the field goal so Connor defending his turf here from Kelly Davis those salespeople, Connor you just can't trust them throw in here by I know she's a salesperson I'm kidding Connor <laughs> So Jackson throwing it down, throwing it goes out of bounds off of them, and Riverton will throw it. Well, they'll throw it out of bounds because that's what you do. So it'll go back over to Jackson here. Riverton definitely playing on their heels in the second half, much like they did the tail end of the first and the beginning of the first. Jackson unable to find a goal in play here. They do have the one off of a uh, set piece. But they've been able to not muster a whole lot here, especially in the second half, as far as offense, even though they have dominated possession. And here they're trying to do the same thing. It looks like Holscher, who's back in, she's going to curve. And, oh, it's going to smack the face of, I do believe that's Gordon. Hardcore. Timbery Mathil trying to get rid of it. McConaughey on it now. And it looks like, a Yarber's going to kick it towards the center, get him a little bit of distance, but taken right back by Jackson. Jackson gets it to Holscher. Holscher looking to come straight down the center. She cannot get rid of Fossey at the moment. Finally does. Puts it on. Nope. It is going to be too high. That'll be her fifth shot of the day. Unable to get it on target with... 27. Like 27-5. 27-5. Say it with a little more confidence and authority there, Connor. Yeah, well, no, that ain't going to happen. Jackson with it yet again. As we've said, Riverton unable to find anything remotely resembling possession for about the past seven minutes going down the, towards the goal they wish to head towards. It's been hard, but the defense has played phenomenal. Gordon with another steal. This time trying to get it out. They're trying to get to it with McConaughey. Unable to do so. Turn, and Jackson has it again in the attacking third. It's going to go out of bounds this time, though, and it's going to be off of Jackson. It'll be a throw for Riverton down towards their own far corner. Throwing is going to be headed out. They'll gain Riverton some steam, at least downfield a bit. Going to take place about the 25-yard line is the throw. Thrown in again. This is going to be headed. And it's going to go and go. And we'll just throw in from where we did two throw-ins ago. Riverton being outshot in this half, three to zero on the day they've been outshot ten to three. We've got a whistle. Here comes the throw. She got herself. She's good throw, and we just are going to do what we just did. It's going to go downfield. It's going to go out of bounds, and we'll throw it. Riverton will throw again. Let's see if this one sent right back. Nope, it's going to be deflected, but right to Fossey. Fossey trying to get it to Celia Mejorado. Goes right back to Fossey. And now McConaughey giving chase. Not going to be able to get to it. And it's going to go out of bounds for a throw by Riverton. Okay, and now, now cameraman Connor, the man, the myth, the legend, 
is in an argument with Kelly Day, and that's just what I needed today. It's Friday, y'all. So after a couple of fights for possession, it's going to go downfield and be hit out by Riverton, so it'll be a throw in the attacking third for Jackson, and two Riverton players run each other over, run each other over, and it's in the box, unable to do anything the first time with it's Jackson, this time stolen away again by McConaughey, and they're going to at least get it to go out of bounds a little further downfield. It will be a throw, actually, for Riverton with 24. 24 minutes left flat, evidently. you gotta, you got to say something. We're waiting for you to say the seconds with bated breath. Stolen away on the throw in. And now they're going to look for Paskett. Paskett coming down the right side. She's on side. And, boy, what a good play by Jackson. They're going to force it over the end line. It will set up a corner. Let's see who they're going to have take it. Cammy was headed towards it originally. Morton is staying in place. So Cammy Paskett is going to take this corner kick. Only the second of the day. Here for Riverton, second corner kick. On the near side, which we can't really get too well. Here's the ball. It's going to go right to the keeper. So got it up in the air, but just I, I, just not really where you want it to be where Riverton can make a play on it. Stolen away, though, by Riverton as Jackson was looking to counterattack. Coming down the field is, I think that's Fossey. Fossey gets tripped up, loses it, and then forces a kick out of bounds. So it, or f kicks it out of bounds uh, to stop play. So it'll be a throw-in for the Jackson Lady Bronx. Throw-in's going to go clear back to Mossbrucker on the back line. Mossbrucker trying to get it up to Celia Meharado, unable to keep control of it, and they're going to look to push. And it's now going to be a foot race, and boy, can Mossbrucker fly. Uh, makes up the ground, is dead even, but now Steinberg comes out of it, and it's going to go off of Steinberg. Good play by Gordon there, I do believe. Gordon able to push the ball off of Steinberg and over the end line for a goal kick. Oh, I forgot to change the period number here. Or the half number, it's the second half. Sorry about that for folks watching at home. Going to have a substitution. Talon Leesburg is going to come back in. She's going to come in. We, we hardly even knew it. Or we hardly noticed. Do apologize there that that was Julian Spradlin who just came in. Didn't notice her come in. <laughs> Don't see every substitution. I feel bad. <laughs> Well, she just came out, but we didn't see her go in. We caught her coming out. So on a cross, going to put it on net or attempt to put it on net is, I can't tell what number because she now turned around. But it stopped by Maharada. It was going to be wide right nonetheless. Connor, see that player coming across the 25 right now in the middle? Right there. 25 in the middle, now 35. At the full. Okay. So Jackson with the turn, uh, Jackson with the takeaway, looking to push down. We're trying to get the number of the person standing on the hash mark at the twenty, Connor. Ah, uh, that was McClennan. Jackson with the takeaway yet again. This time I'm going to put it on net. It is on net, but it is picked up easily out of the shot by Marillin. And that is actually the first real save of the game by Maharada. She didn't have to put much into it as she had it well scouted. Comes with 20, and a, 20 minutes, 5 seconds left. A half here that has been dominated possession-wise by Jackson, but and shots on goal-wise, but nothing to show for as far as taking the lead back.
But Jackson does steal it back as soon as Riverton trying to get it into their offensive half. Stop there again by Ayana Maharado. But Jackson able to maintain possession and get it down for a throw here. Jackson, again, possession-wise having their way, and now they're starting to get balls that are a bit more on target. And so Riverton need to be very careful here. Um, you can't expect to score 23 seconds later. Um, I don't know if they – Caught Jackson napping a little bit. They did catch him out of possession. There's another shot on goal, this one by McLennan. And it's going to be yet another stop by Maharado. And off the goal kick, or excuse me, off the punt, it's going to be taken right away by Jackson. Riverton trying for the deep passes, and, and it hasn't worked in two games. It's it's been a it's been an issue um, as teams are anticipating that they're anticipating Camry Pascal being on the end of it. They're anticipating short goal kicks to Savannah Morton, and then so they're going to have to change some things up if they want to try and get some possession. The the long passes are being just blanketed, and especially Cami Paskett. When you look back here, that whole back line is basically just bracketing her. One's in front, one's in back, one on the left, one on the right. So it's going to be very hard for her, even as good as she can be, to break down that level of defense where they they've got a backup and a contingency plan on top of a contingency plan on top of a contingency plan, trying to center it there to McLennan. Comes away more with it. Now she Fossey. Fossey looking to get it to pass it. But again, there you go, the person on the left. And looking to counterattack here. It's gonna be Montez trying to get it up far. They do. It'll go out of bounds. It'll be a throw for Jackson. Throwing to Holscher. Holscher looking to split two defenders. Can't do it. McConaughey with a great steal there, and then they're gonna get Holscher for the foul. She came in with an elbow from behind. But after the free kick, Jackson steals it away. Riverton now trying to get out. They get they bring Cammy Pascal up. She gets around midfield, but the person guarding the front with three behind her could be very aggressive there with the players behind. Oh, 
And now they're going to get this is going to be offsides, I would think. No, they're not going to signal against Katie Yarber. But Rommel, who came in for Rhodes in the goal, is able to get up and get it taken away. Riverton now looking to push things forward. They do get it. Cammy Paskett was looking to get it out to Decada Yarber uh, and unable to get to it before Rommel comes in. A little bit different. Rhodes was definitely the uh, the less experienced on the season of the goalkeepers for Jackson. Rommel was significantly more minutes. Um, Rhodes just had the better goals against average and she allows one on average, and she's done that again. But this time, Jackson going to put it on net, and it's just going to be wide. And I think that's Holscher there. Holscher's going to throw her hands up to her face. As that was probably one of her better shot attempts. Um, again, she has the one free kick where she scored, but that was probably one of the better ones that she had from the field, and she hit the side of the net. So goal kick going to wind up McConaughey. McConaughey's going to head it, and there's nobody there. Um, and Jackson comes away with it, short passing to get it up towards the attacking third. Gonna go wide again, and Riverton. But will Riverton be able to do anything with this goal kick? It's gonna be to Yarber. Yarber trying to keep it away. McLennan, just bigger, stronger, faster, really is able to take it away. Now they're gonna go outside. They're looking for. I think that's Ritter. Can't see a number. That does look like a seven from here. No, it looks like a three. Actually, it'd be Vargas. McLennan down towards the side of the box, looking to cross. Nothing there. Finally does a pullback, but what a great defensive effort there by Timbery Mathil. She doesn't get the clearance, but she was able to stick with McLennan, who was doing everything in her power to try and, and juke her out to get a shot or a cross, crossing path, pass, excuse me, across the mouth of the goal. Jackson off the goal kick, going to pull it in, and they're going to look to get in the attacking third again. They do, they get into that easily. Here is a shot on goal, and it is easily picked up by Dakota. Uh, by wow, I almost said Dakota. It's Ayana Meharado. Shot was by number six or eight. Who's more likely? I do believe that's actually Flanagan. I think it is number eight. Having with 10.42. And Jackson has it in the attacking third, looking to set things up yet again. And this one's going to be a good field goal. This by Holscher, unable to get it down yet again. She puts it high. That is her eighth shot of the day. The 
17 shots to three. That's what Jackson's let it in, 10 shots to zero. Yet Riverton is still tied with Jackson. Okay, just got a word of notes. The wind is the wind is going to only increase. By the time the boys get underway, it's going to be 15 and a half miles an hour constant. Throw in there by Jackson looking to get in the box. They do with ease. Riverton collapses down on it and forces them out. But McLennan with it gets it to Holsher. Holsher. Trying to run to her right to the center. She likes to kind of tee up her right leg that way she does. And the field goal is good again. Her ninth shot of the day missed high again. That's been kind of the story. Outside the set piece, she's been trying to go for the upper crossbar to sneak it in. At this point, make Ayana work if you're if you're her. Make her make some saves. Get the ball down. Um, it has been high consistently from the field. And off the goal kick, it's stolen again with how much time left, Connor? 8-19. Left in or this match, it will go out and will be a throw in for Jackson. Jackson absolutely, unlike the first half where they had some breaks, Riverton unable to buy a break here. It does go out of bounds off of Jackson right there. Riverton hasn't had possession, real any kind of setup possession. I could probably say all half. They might have had about 30 seconds there early on but they really have not been able to do anything against this Jackson team. Riverton, it seems, content to try and hold out to take their record to 2-1-2. Two, two. That would also take Jackson to 3-1-2. and two. Off the throw when Jackson's going to come away with it. Holsher with it, going to her left. Trying to come back right, trying to get past Fossey. Unable to do so. Passes it off, and it winds up now with Flanagan. Flanagan making a nice move on Decada Yarber. Able to outmuscle her and stay in it. Gets pass off. Now they get it back to Holscher, and Holscher's going to fall, and they're going to say a foul on Fossey. So Holsch are going to set up. This is kind of the exact same spot she scored from earlier. And this one, Ayana Maharado just steps right in front of. No problem there. This is the 10th shot of the day by Holscher. She only has one goal. Again, as we said earlier, when we look at the statistics, she's tied with, uh, she was tied with Marillin coming in as the leading goal scorer. Oddly, Marillin only with one shot on goal, but Marillin highly more efficient um, at scoring goals when she has shots on goal. Um, she's able to put away at a higher percentage. And now they've got Steinberg on a long run out, and that's going to be an offsides, it looks like. That'll be the third one of the day against her. And I don't know where exactly. She went offsides about the 29-yard line is what they're going to say. And we've got 540 left in this match. Fossey with it. Now, it'll be interesting to see if Riverton tries to do anything to push him by forward and get this win late. But Jackson going to try and put it in the tag and third against Savannah Morton giving chase, and she's unable to keep it from going out of bounds. She was trying to turn, take it off the bounce, unable to do so. So it'll be thrown in here by Marillen. Marillen to McLennan. This time to Holscher. Holscher puts it on goal. Nope, just goes wide left. That's her 11th shot of the day. And it looks like you've been shooting shotgun, an old school shot, like bird shot at my score sheet. As Jackson's got just little, little marks everywhere. Riverton in the second half, no shots on goal. Goal kick is short. It winds up with Savannah Morton. Now she'll she'll be forced by a encroaching 
Jackson Lady Bronk, and she kicks it away, and it goes over to Jackson to McLennan now. McLennan looking to cross it over. They're going to get to Holscher now. Holscher to McLennan. McLennan looking to go to the right. is stolen away by McConaughey for a brief moment. Then she's able to out-physical somebody. Now she's got a little room to run. She gets it up to Paskett. Paskett trying to pass back to no seep. Wasn't able to hit her on the run. Crosses McConaughey. McConaughey up to Decada Yarber. Decada was trying to one-touch it over to Cammy Paskett, but it will go out of bounds, deflected off of Flanagan. And it will be a Riverton throw with 350 left in the match. So, no, they're going to actually say it was a foul against Flanagan. And so it's going to be a free kick. It's going to be by, by Savannah Morton, and it's going to go out of bounds. They're going to say for a goal kick, it's going to go over the end line. That was a foul against Flanagan. So it'll be a goal kick here. Riverton starting to push up a little bit. Uh, the goal kick's going to go right to Fossey, but she can't control it. It's going to go out of bounds. It'll be a throw at the 25 for Jackson. Throw in. Intercepted by Celia Matarado, trying to head it over to No Seep. Unfortunately, running right into it is number four. And now, uh-oh, numbers for Jackson as they were able to come through. Very aggressive Riverton midfield. They got three on four, about best you can open soccer. It's going to be kicked over the end line, and it's going to be a corner kick. Looks like Steinberg is going to take this one. Be the fourth of the day for Jackson. It's high. It's crossing the mound. Maharada goes right up and takes it. Takes it away with... 2.30 to play in the match. I'm glad I brought the bongo drums with me, a.k.a. Connor's head. <laughs> Long throw in after it went out off Riverton. Riverton trying to now going to have to play defense as McLennan comes up, takes away, going down the left side. McLennan looking to cross, does so to Holscher. Holscher has it taken away nicely by McConaughey. I'll tell you, there's more, she's got more and more playing time as the season has gone on, and boy, is she taking advantage of it. Plays very physical for someone of her stature as well. Steinberg with a steal off of poorly played ball there. Fossey going to try and help out as Gordon looked like she was going to look for it to go over the end line, then looked to do a pullback, and Steinberg, Ella Steinberg was right there to take it. Morton and Noseep. Noseep looking to turn. Hits it into Celia Maharado's side of her face, but it went right to her feet after that. But now stolen right back away by Jackson. Jackson looking to do a give-and-go, taking off of it. Timbery Mathil trying to keep possession. McLennan's going to put it on net. No, it's going to go just wide to the left. Now I'm running out of spots to put those. And Ayana Matarado perfectly content to take her time. Riverton definitely playing for the tie at this point. Morton looking to clear it. And it's right to Jackson. Jackson's at least going to have one more last hurrah at it. But it's stolen away. Yarber gets a hold of it. Looking for no seep. No seep with it. Trying to break free. She has nobody downfield to help her, though, and no one really behind her. It's going to go out of bounds. It'll be a throw for Riverton, but we're under 15 seconds now. Mathil's going to come out, switch out with Morton to take it. We're under 10 seconds. Throw in is going to be at the feet of no seat, but it's going to bounce over with four seconds. And then it's going to go out of bounds off Jackson, and that's going to do it. So your final score here is one to one.
and we will be right back where we will have the Click It or Ticket postgame show, and then we'll follow it up with the boys' game here on Wyo Today. Shoshone Rose Casino and Hotel is proud to support youth sports in Fremont County. Enjoy a meal at the Deca Guy He restaurant. Deca Guy He is Shoshone for the Eating House. Open daily from 7.30 a.m. until 9 p.m. Try a weekend getaway with the family in one of their comfortable, pet-friendly guest rooms and enjoy the heated swimming pool. Book online at ShoshoneRose.com and remember to support Fremont County youth sports. Go team! Your tax pros at 219 East Main Street in Riverton, Wyoming can handle all your tax needs. Whatever your situation, we know what to do. Call 307-856-2256 today to schedule an appointment. H&R Block is open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Welcome to the Click It or Ticket postgame show here on Wire Today. The Lady Wolverines and the Lady Bronx of Jackson have tied a one-to-one. Uh, in the first half, it was that 23-second period uh, from 24-15 to 23-52 left in the first half where Jackson finished on a free kick from 22 yards out by Holscher. And then immediately on the kickoff, or not on the kickoff, but a play resulting off the kickoff, you found Maya Noseep finding Cammy Paskett on a nice little run, and Paskett tied it up at one. That is the positive, is the result for Riverton. Now let's get to some things that have got to be concerning because they have happened for several games. Um, now, is Riverton was outshot. 21 to 3. three uh, 7 to 3 in the first, 14 to nothing. But that back line and Ayana Maharado in goal able to face a barrage of shots by Holscher and McKinnon, especially, and able not to wilt and able to hold out this result. Uh, Holscher, leading scorer, had 11 shots. Um, next up was McKinnon with six. And then uh, Kramer. Ritter, Flanagan, and Marillen each with one. But only one goal on 21 shots, and that being the free kick. For Riverton, of course, that was, as we said, my no seep assisting. Cammy Paskett in the first half to tie it up. Um, only three shots on goal, two by Cammy Paskett, one by Savannah Morton, one assist. Of course, that of no seep, one goal of Cammy Paskett. Um, of other note, Ayana Maharado had three big saves coming in the second half at uh, against a Marillen at 20.05 left in the second against McLennan at 1749 and then lastly against Flanagan at 1042. The only other thing really of note was Kimmy Paskett received a yellow card at 3537 left in the second half. So your Papa Murphy's player of the game is going to be kind of simple. The player of the game is Cammy Paskett once again. Cammy Paskett, your Papa Murphy's player of the game with a one goal on two shots. Of course, it was the equalizer. Assisting on that was the Gatorade player of the game, and it was the Gatorade player of the game was the pass by Maya Nosey. So congratulations to them on getting the tie here in Riverton's defense of really able to shut things down to get that tie. So we're going to take a few minute break and we'll be right back with the Hampton Inn Suites pregame show and look at the boys game here and the Ranger keys of the game here on Wyo Today. 381 Subs and Salads is the newest addition to Fremont County. They offer salads, sandwiches, ice cream, and lotus drinks. 381 Subs and Salads is located at 702 East Main Street in Riverton. Enjoy fresh made pizza, pasta, calzones, and subs at Perrette's, 519 West Main in Riverton. Open for lunch and dinner Monday through Friday. Closed on weekends. Call 857 7306 to order for pickup or delivery with DoorDash. Perrette's. Midway is at an all out clear out for the new 2022 campers with the best price guarantee. 
Midway has financing with no money down, no payments for the rest of the year. Low, low interest rates on sweet fifth wheel. Dealer incentives up to 25000 on toy haulers. Top dollar on trade-ins and door-to-door delivery. It's Midway's all-out clear-out. MidwayCampers.com. Midway, when you expect the best. And welcome back to Wired Today. It is now time for the Hamden and Sweets pregame show. Girls game finishes up all tied at one. Boys games are coming up here in just a few moments. About 15, actually. So it will be the Jackson Bronx coming in at 4-1. and one. And, boy, I've, we've had a chance to call them first game of the season for them against Lander. And they're the real deal. They come in at 4-1. and one. Riverton coming in to defend this one at 1-3. and three. And you look no further than Teddy Oppler, number seven. He's got 12 goals on the season, leads everywhere at one. Augie Holschler has put in nine. Isaac Zarat has put in three. As has Braden Hills. Finn Beninga has put in five. Villasagna has put in two. Smock has put in two. Um, and then assists, they got 31, 39 goals on 31 assists. But when you look at Teddy Oppler, 31 points overall, 12 goals, 7 assists, 25 out of his 36 shots taken have been on goal. He's taken 6 penalty kicks, 18 corner kicks. He's hit one game-win goal, and his goal percentage is 48. Only one player on the team has more shots, more or more anything than him, and that's just game-winning goals, and that's Augie Holster has two of those. It is a team that is very well coached by Matt Holscher. And then you look at the goalkeepers, your best goal, both of them play quite a bit. One, number five, Bruno Silva has played five games, 195 minutes in those. Baylog Alexis has played three of those games, but for 185 minutes. And as far as what they have on here, only one of them has allowed a goal, and that being Bruno Silva. And Bruno Silva has the one loss. It was a penalty kick attempt. Um, he didn't save it, and he's 1-1-0, and whereas Alexis is 3-0. and Goals against is .4 uh, for Silva. Nothing for Alexa. Alexa has two shutouts. He has three victories. He has faced three shots on goal. He saved them all. So a lot to take in there. Your Ranger keys to the game for Riverton is going to be very simple. Do not get overwhelmed, and you've got to find a way, much like we said with the girls, and they just found enough to get the tie and play great enough defense. You've got to find a way to get some possession in the attacking third and in the offensive half. If you don't do that, um, even more so than the girls, the girls are the real deal for Jackson, but so is Riverton. The Jackson boys are, dare we say, they've got a chance to be elite on this season. So if you're if you're Riverton and you think you're going to sit back and play defense and just let them kind of dominate the possession, you're going to lose and you're going to lose big. Um, so Riverton's really going to have to do some things. They've got some of their players back that were missing from the team, so that is always good. Um, some of those being starters, so that will uh, at least lengthen up the bench a bit. And it'll be interesting to see what Coach Samuelson decides to do with Teddy Oppler. Um, we saw what Lander attempted to do, which was at time really get on him, but they didn't really know what they had first game of the season. And I'm sure Jackson knew, but Lander didn't know what they were facing. And Oppler was just insanely, insanely accurate and good. Um, he, he's willing to shoot as well as pass the ball. He does not care about that. He's looking to win, and he wants to win big. So it's really going to be get some possession, keep it away from Oppler, but also take that first oomph. Looking at records, you know Jackson's going to come and try and take a first shot. It's going to be a barrage probably pretty quick. Going to want to try and, in their mind, try and end the game early. And if Rivers can, can survive that and then try and counter off of it, then we've got ourselves a ball game. Riverton, a team that is better than their record, in my opinion, at 1-3-0, and just like Kelly Walsh, both teams were the other day. But Jackson is a team that is as good as their record, if not maybe slightly better. That's a team who, at 4-1, and 
could, wouldn't surprise anybody if they were undefeated. So it's going to be a big one. It would be an upset for Riverton, but they have the pieces to do it. Another key to the game is they're going to have to get Gold and Saltsgaver involved, um, and especially Saltsgaver because the offense kind of goes through him and then to either Gold or Logan Davis or someone of that nature. So that's kind of where we're at as far as Ranger keys of the game. We'll be right back in a few minutes with the Sutherland starting lineups here on Wyo Today. We're out here at a branding today, and there's a lot of hazards going on, and a lot of times you don't have control of that type of an environment. The agricultural industry has a lot of hazards in it. We jump in a vehicle, we run down the road five miles, 10 miles, and most accidents happen within 10 miles of where you live. And so there's really no excuse not to wear your seatbelt, even though it is a short distance, you need to wear your seat belt in order to preserve uh, your health and your family's well-being at the end of the day. The seat belt is a decision you make individually and you're in control of that. So uh, there's not a lot of excuses for not wearing your seat belt. Embrace comfort throughout the seasons with Northern Arapaho propane and solid waste. Proudly rooted in the local community, supporting Fremont County year-round. Your preferred supplier serving enrolled and non-enrolled members. For more information, call 307-463-4185. Community Health Centers of Central Wyoming has locations across Fremont County ready to serve you at Dubois Medical Clinic, Riverton Community Health, and Lander Community Health Pediatrics. We accept all forms of insurance, including Medicaid and Medicare. Are you struggling to get medical care? Ask for their sliding fee scale. From family medicine to pediatrics, community health centers are here to serve you. Call 307-463-7160 or visit chccw.org to schedule your appointment. Your car or truck is an investment. When it needs repairs, you need someone you can trust to do the job right. Take it to Gunners Automotive. They repair all makes and models of cars and trucks, from oil changes to brakes, tires, and more. Gunners Automotive, 856-2288. Papa Murphy's on North Federal in Riverton makes your pizza to order. Order online at papamurphys.com or in store. Delicious, fresh-made pizza just the way you want it. Papa Murphy's is a proud supporter of our local Fremont County student-athletes. When you purchase your car, do you know if you got the best payment possible? The answer is probably no. Oftentimes, your loan is packed with additional charges that can drive your monthly payment higher than it should be, costing you thousands of dollars more for your car. Hi, this is Patty, and here is your second chance to get the payment you deserve. Visit Atlantic City Federal Credit Union today for a courtesy loan review. We've helped our members save money by refinancing their vehicle with us. Now it's your turn. Open your eyes to a credit union. Atlantic City Federal Credit Union. Riverton's Hampton Inn and Suites is proud to sponsor our youth athletics in Fremont County. Fremont County School Athletics provide our youth timeless experiences and lessons that can lead to success for life. Setting goals, teamwork, and hard work make young athletes into good citizens. When repairs are complete after a collision, you expect your car, SUV, or truck to look like new. That's the service you'll receive at Stork Auto Body in Riverton. Professionalism and meticulous attention to detail. You can depend on Stork Auto Body, 841 Miniweb Avenue, Riverton. The choice is yours. Sutherland's Friends of the Family Plus Consumer Credit Card lets you choose from 5% off instantly at the register or special financing on qualifying purchases. That means no forms, no waiting, no rebates. You can choose 5% off instantly with your Sutherland's Credit Card. Got a big project? Choose special financing. The choice is yours with Sutherland's Friends of the Family Plus Consumer Credit Card. Subject to credit approval, minimum monthly payment required. See store for details only at Sutherland's. At Teton Therapy, our people make the difference.
You can live pain-free. The amazing staff at Teton Therapy can help in Lander and Riverton. From the wide open spaces to the canyon near you, Wyoming.com is reaching more homes and businesses than ever before. For more than 25 years, we've aimed to provide the best internet and phone service to meet the needs of our customers all across the great state of Wyoming. Now it's getting even better. Wyoming.com, expanding to an area near you. Wyoming.com, we're out there. Bailey's Enterprises is a proud sponsor of Riverton Wolverines football. For over 50 years, Bailey's has become the name you can trust. With pit stop travel centers, you can fuel up and stock up on trip snacks at locations all over Fremont County. You can also put your trust in Bailey Tire and Auto for service and to keep handy for those times when your luck runs out on the road. Refresh at the Speedway Cafe with a dine-in meal or a round of carry-out with a variety of specials to keep you going. Go with Bailey, go Wolverines. Want access to local news, sports, events, and more? Download the Wyo Today app. Now available on all platforms. Stream your favorite radio station, submit something to buy, sell, or trade for deals on the dial, or view contests and special coupons. Better yet, the Wyo Today app is the best way to access free HD video of Fremont and Hot Springs County Athletics. It's all at your fingertips. Head to your app store or visit wyotoday.com to download the Wyo Today app now. Wind River Family and Community Healthcare has clinics located in Arapahoe, Ethity, and Riverton. We provide family medical services along with dental, optometry, behavioral health, physical and occupational therapy, and more. Our in-house lab and pharmacy at all locations make for a one-stop primary health care center for your health care needs. Wind River Family and Community Healthcare is striving for a stronger, healthier community because Wind River Cares. More information can be found at windrivercares.com. High Plains Power is a Touchstone Energy Cooperative. What does that mean for you as a Rural Electric Association member? It all comes down to seven principles. Open membership, one voice, one vote, member benefits, independence, education, cooperation, and community. To understand how it all works, we're headed back in time. In 1879, electricity was in major cities, but rural areas were out of luck. In 1935, President FDR made it possible for companies to build power lines to unserved areas. By the time we hit 1941, some 400 electric co-ops had been organized to serve rural America, just like High Plains Power. For more information, visit highplainspower.org. We believe that everyone deserves a second chance, including us. Hi, I'm Brian Robacher, CEO of Atlantic City Federal Credit Union. And if we said no to you in the past, I'm asking you for a second chance too. In the midst of everything happening, we are committed now more than ever to second chances and when it comes to your finances. An auto loan for your new car, business loans, home loans, and more. Give Atlantic City Federal Credit Union a second chance to give you a second chance. We've been helping our community thrive since 1964, and now it's your turn. Visit AtlanticCity.coop to apply today. Atlantic City Federal Credit Union, federally insured by the NCUA. Wyoming Waste hopes that all Fremont County sports teams dismiss their opponents like Wyoming Waste dismisses your trash. They offer services from roll-off cans, commercial, and residential garbage. Wyoming Waste Services, Fremont County, Hot Springs County, Washakie County. They are open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Please call 307-856-5354 or stop down at the Riverton office, 730 South Broadway. Wyoming Waste wants to wish everyone in Fremont County good luck in their sports this year. If your vehicle needs repair, you can depend on the crew at Extra Care Auto Repair. They can repair almost anything with wheels, gas, diesel, domestic, or import, and their work is top quality and reliable. Extra Care Auto Repair on North Federal in Riverton.
You need an oil change, but you don't have a lot of time. Expressway Lubes on South Federal in Riverton and Highway 789 in Lander provide a fast, professional lube oil and filter change. Expressway Lubes, locally owned and proud to support our local student-athletes. The staff and board at the Fremont County Fair wish to thank everyone who attended the fair this year. Whether you enjoyed family day, a night event, entered a craft show, or showed your livestock, thank you for all your efforts. We'll be moving and grooving next year, so stay tuned. Riverton Blowdorn Lumber is proud to support youth sports. Experience the Blowdorn difference. Quality products, design, delivery, and expert service. Blowdorn Lumber, 1202 North Federal in Riverton. Blowdorn Lumber. Do you need a midday pick me up? Lander Coffee Company serves delicious, fresh roasted coffee, tea, and other drinks. Come to think of it, why not start your day with their quick, healthy breakfasts, like one of their famous acai bowls or maybe a breakfast burrito? Just need a quick snack? They got you. Stop by, fuel up, and enjoy at 1255 Main Street in Lander at the Lander Coffee Company. And welcome back to Riverton High School and Riverton Athletics here on Wyo Today Media. It is time for your starting lineups brought to you by Sutherland's Home Improvement and Building Materials. First for the visitors from Jackson and goal will be number one, Martinez. Followed by number seven, Opler. Number eight, Hills. Number two, Wetzler. Number four, Condi. Number 10, Holscher. Number 11, Zarati. Number 17, Smock. Number 18, Beninga. Number 13, Vargas. And number nine, Baristain. For the Riverton Wolverines, it'll be number zero, Blake Gantenbein and goal. Number six, Jack Anderson. Number seven, Aiden Jones. Number 10, Marcus Maharado. Number 11, Kyler Heal or Heil. Number 12, Hunter Saltzgaver. Number 14, Logan Davis. Number 15, uh, excuse me, number 15, Christopher Milliken. Number 16, Landon Gold. Number 17, Jackson Larson. Number 32, Trenton Weber. Number 34, Jacob Hull. And number 28, which we don't have on this roster, Tarango. Of course, Coach Samuelson and Coach Holscher are the respective coaches for Riverton and Lander. So we will be right back here with the kickoff here on Wyo Today. Great rates, a convenient location, standard room, and family rooms with bunk beds. Choice hotel members earn points while you stay. Quality Inn is proud to support Fremont and Hot Springs County student-athletes. Head to Nana's Bowling and Bakery in Dubois for Family Fun Night. Now booking parties for all ages and occasions. To reserve your company, family, or birthday party, call 455-3660. Nana's Bowling and Bakery is proud to support Fremont County student-athletes. And welcome back. It is Riverton and Jackson here in the boys game, the afternoon or the night cap, if you will. Riverton dressed like, well, Atlanta United, kind of the five stripes type thing going on. They will be going right to left in their red and their black. Uh, Jackson in their white and black. So everybody seems to be ready, and we are underway. And immediately a turnover. Hunter Saltzgaver trying to push forward. Jones thinking he was going to pull back, and it goes all the way, and they will look to bring it in. Crossover by Jackson in the box. They put it down. Nope, and here is a weak shot, but Gantenbein able to get on top of it as it was kind of right on top of him. That shot by number nine, that's Barriston. 
And that happened literally at the 39-33 mark of the first period. So already a shot on goal, making Blake Ganton by and work. Riverton able to get it up into the half, and then it's taken away. And it looks like Jackson will try and go backwards to try and set things up at a more controlled pace. Jackson moving with speed, and I can't believe what I'm about to say. They look like they're faster than they were against Lander, and they look speedy there. It looks like now, well, it makes sense. I guess they're in midseason form at this point. Getting up to Barristan. Barristan's going to bring it back for Jackson. Now he's going to turn as he's got some room to run, and he's going to take advantage of it. Looking to go to the center, he does. He finds Holscher. And there's Sean Goal, and it's Goal. Happens at 38-39. It happens just that quick. Holster number 10 with that goal. Off the assist by Beninga. And that's that's not Riverton wanted to get the quick start. Now they're 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 behind one. Now they've got to figure some things out here. Only the second shot on goal. Riverton going to start out. They're going to look to go forward, going for Hunter Saltzgaver, and it's just a little too forward for him, and it's going to be turned right over. And here comes Jackson on the move potentially again. This is number two coming down. We don't have number two. Yes, we do. It's Wetzler. And looking to cross over, and it's going to be missed and missed a way off target. Luckily for Riverton, we'll set up a goal kick here. Thirty-seven fifty to go in the first half. Riverton down by one. Early on, short goal kick here. They're going to rush it. Here comes Berenstain. Looking to take it. Jones able to get away from him for a second, but now Holscher has it. Holscher gives it up to Oppler. Oppler dishing outside, looking for a cross. Cross is to Beninga. He's unable to get a shot off. Looks like Logan Davis over there cleared it out. He'll get it to... He'll get it to Landon Goal, who's going to try and put a long pass out for Jones. That's going to bring Martinez way off his line, but he will get rid of it as it will go up towards Vargas. Cross is over to number two, Wetzler. Wetzler to Holscher. Holscher outside to Oppler. Oppler makes his move, gets open for a cross. Beninga unable to get a hold of it, at nor Beristain, and it'll get kicked out just barely as it goes back to Holscher. Holscher trying to give his team a 2-0 lead here. Jackson looking to cross it up, gets it over to Vargas. Vargas looking to try and get to Oppler, but it was taken away, but taken right back. And this is going to be a wide shot by Beristain. Be his second shot of the day. This one much more off, off target. Three shots on goal so far for the Jackson Bronx. Short goal kick this time contested, and it forces a turnover. Beninga with it. Gets it back, does Benigni, gets inside and puts it in. That is his first shot, first goal of the game. Comes with 35-50. And the assist is going to go to Oppler. So Riverton now down 2-0. They're going to have to look, to, and they turn over the kickoff immediately. And looking to push is Berenstain. Berenstain unable to get across. Logan Davis is going to clear it quite a bit. No one really down there. It'll be headed back towards his goalkeeper by Hills. By virtue of the header, able to pick it up and sling it. 
instead of having to play it with his feet. And here comes Jackson looking to come down the far side. We're still not even five minutes into this. They've got it to Teddy Oppler. Oppler to Halsher. Halsher looking to get a squared off shot. It's blocked. And will go out of bounds and go for a throw on the far side for Jackson. Jackson with the throw. It gets it to Vargas. Vargas to Oppler. Oppler back to Vargas. Couple passes, winds back up with Oppler. Oppler looking across, puts it in the air. Curved a little bit too much for him, I do believe. Winds up with Wetzler, who will take the shot. He's going to get it right to Gantenbein at the 34-43 mark. Punt is going to go way down. It's going to wind up with Jones. Jones unable to keep control of it. And now it's stolen. Holsher with it. Holsher to Oppler. Now Oppler with room to work. He's going to get it over to Berenstain. Back to Oppler. Oppler's going to look to shoot. No good. And it's going to be forced by a save. By, it was not going to go in, but it was just wildly there. Fifth shot of the day really wasn't needed to be saved as it was going wide, but it looked like it might not reach out there. And now, oh, Oppler had a run on, or Holscher had a run on there. Nice pass through, um, but luckily for River to Gantenbein right there to pick it up. He's going to throw it into Durango, or going to roll it over to Durango. Durango's just going to be easily have his pocket picked there by Beninga. Beninga to Holscher. Holscher in the box. Holscher looking to put something on. It's deflected and then cleared as Oppler was trying to get to it. Sent down low this time to... Wetzler, and we're going to have a third goal of the day with 33.07. This is going to be by Wetzler. Kelly. Poplar. Oppler with the goal there. Not surprising that he now has his first goal on his second shot. Wetzler with the assist. Riverton off the, uh, they're going to kick it back off the kickoff to Hunter Saltzgaber. And he's going to look to get it to Jones, stolen. And now Hoshler has it. Hoshler trying to get open. Holsler coming to his right, down to Oppler. Oppler loses control of it. He was trying to get it over to Vargas. And Beninga will come in and just kick it further back. Coming down the far side is Jackson. They get open, looks across to Holsler. And it's going to finally be cleared. It'll go out of bounds at about midfield for a throw-in by Jackson. There's playing with your heels dug in, and then there's there's this right now. Right now, it's a it's a little bit of shell shock for Riverton um, to find yourself down three, less than eight minutes into the game. But they need to kind of collect themselves and figure out what they can do to stop this. Logan Davis going for a steal there with the head leaves Holscher open though. Holscher forced to give it up as Riverton collapses on him. Landing goal and, and Jones trying to get something going, but unable to do so. We're going to working it, excuse me, Jackson working down the far side. And here's a cross, nice high with some spin. Gantbine's going to cr crawl up the back or just jump as high as he can and try and keep Holscher from trying to get a head on that. Does so. Nice play by Gantenbein with 31-27 left in the first. Punt falls right to Riverton. Um, nicely done there as it hit Jack Anderson. Saltscaper with it now, and he's going to try and hit Gold on a run out. Gold getting open, takes a shot right off, right off the ground. It was bouncing kind of away. Nicely done. Unfortunately... It is going to be stopped. 
at the 31-12 mark. And now Jackson looking to counter. Logan Davis going for the steal, unable to get it. Oppler going to try and cross there. And Jack Anderson able to step right in front of it. Throwing him is by Jackson. Tarango going to step in front of it, tries to get it to Jones, and does so eventually. Now they're looking to get it to Landon Goal, and they put it out there for him, and it's intercepted on the way. Long pass is much like for the girls' game. Not going to work here against this Jackson team, which besides being fast and creative, is also very fundamental. We're now going to see Spradling come in, as well as Milliken. Going to come in for gold and Jackson Larson. Throw in is by Jackson, and they'll try and get it over to Oppler. They do. Now over to Beristain. Back, uh, pass it back, and now gets it back. Now they're going the far left. Can't see the number on that kid. Back to Beristain. Excuse me, not Beristain, to Vargas now. Oppler now with it. He's going to set up a shot, and he makes Blake Gambi go diving for it. And then they're forced to concede the corner is the back line of Riverton as they will jump on it and kick it over the end line. So it will set up. A corner here. It's going to be on the near side. I don't know who's taking it. I don't see the ball there yet. Two. Uh, no, they they don't have one. <laughs> corner is kicked in. It's number th number three who took it. Actually, no home. And eventually, it's going to wind up with Gantbine. That was, corner kick was taken by Berenstain, number nine. First corner of the day by either team. Falls to Spradlin. Spradlin looking to go to his left. Unable to do so. He's staying with it. Finally, it's passed back by Jackson. Jones in pursuit. Jackson's going to get it all the way around to the other side of the field and look to move. Now Oppler with it with some room to create. Oppler at three. He's going to dish it out for Zarati. Back to Holscher. Holscher to number nine. Goal. Bear is staying with the shot, and he buries it. That'll be his first. It's his third shot on the day. Happens with 27-47. Assist is by Holscher. So it is now four to nothing in favor of Jackson. And it does not look to be slowing any. As I said, this was going to be a tough game based on what we saw in the first game, as we called Jackson and Lander, Austin and I did. But this Jackson team has gotten better. I said they had the chance to be elite. They are elite. And we've got another one. But we're going to get a off. Oh, he's going to, they're going to say he was out. So we don't have the other one, but he took it all the way to the end line, tried to keep it in, and will go for a goal kick with 26-57. First real break of the day, if you can call it that, for Riverton. Um, stolen away after the goal kick in the attacking third and looking to go all the way across. I do believe that's Oppler. Oppler with it. Going to set up to send it in, and it's just going to be wide. 
Missed it on the near side. Eight shot of the day. They have four goals on it, though. Actually, no, that's not right. They got ten shots on goal. Ten shots on goal, four goals. They're they're converting on shots at a clip of forty percent, which would be good in basketball. Connor, how much time we got left in the first half? Twenty four, forty five. Twenty five, forty forty. Having difficulty there, bud? Twenty five forty. Stolen away. Riverton steals it right back. Durango turns, tries to fire it upfield. It's going to go out of bounds on the far side, just past the 45-yard line on the offensive half for Riverton. So it'll be a throw-in by the Bronx. Gambon able to step in front of that one. Not a lot of pace to it, so we'll see. Riverton needing any positive they can build, so build off this. It's going to be wind up getting played all the way back to Martinez. Only time he's really been involved is when they've gone back to him. They've done it now twice. And trying to cross it, and it's going to go out of bounds. Just a big time self influence and self <laughs> self inflicted mistake. It'll be thrown in to Saltscaver. Saltscaver at the 20. He turns. He's going to look to shoot, and that's going to be the first shot of the game, or second shot of the game, excuse me. And it's going to miss high. Jackson with it now going past midfield after the goal kick to Hoesler. Hoesler crosses over your center for Vargas and then right back to Zarati. Zarati looking to move, gets it up the field. Vargas with it. Vargas got a couple choices with it. Goes to the inside choice. Now outside and oh, they just were trying to lead um, number two Wetzler and it was just too far out of his reach. It'll be a throw-in for the Riverton Wolverines here. Throw-in, they'll look to clear it kind of quickly, and it'll be stolen away by Vargas. Vargas gets it to Smock. Smock looking for Oppler. He's got a look. He's crossing. Oh, he was trying to cross it over there for uh, Beristain, and it just just went out of bounds, or missed and went over the end line. It was just a little bit too far ahead of him. So with 25-15 or 22-15. You're having a difficult time there, Connor, man, with the timing. You evidently can't say anything with the time. You get twos and fives mixed up now. So Jackson with it off of steel, looking to cross it, looking for Holscher. They found him, and goal. Long, long assist is going to be by number 17, Smock. Happens with 21-48. 
Holscher now has two. And it is five to nothing here. And we're not halfway through. Um, I take back what I said about this team not be that, that they had the chance to be elite. They are elite. Kick back off the kickoff. They're trying to get it forward, getting it to Spradlin or attempting to, stolen away. Jackson looking to go to the outside. Barristain has it. Barristain looking to get it to Oppler, does get it to him. He's got a lot of crossing. He goes back to Barristain. Barristain makes a move, and it's just going to go over the end line for a goal kick. Gambine going to set the goal kick here. Looking to push forward. Tarango with it. He has to come back with it, and it's taken away by Barristain. Barristain with the cross. They try and get it to Oppler, unable to do so, but they'll come back and grab it and set things up around the 30. Smith with it, who's now in. Four of them has it. Smith gets it back, goes over to Zerati. Zerati looking to cross, or excuse me, not Zerati, that's Hills. Hills looking to cross over. Here's a cross into the box, sent away, but sent right back towards it. They've got it now to Zerati. Zerati looking to cross, looking for Holscher. Holscher just unable to keep control of it, and it'll fall back. And this is just what they do. They're just basically like offensive rebounds and saying back up. Holscher out to somebody whose number I can't see, looking to cross or half shoot maybe, and it's cleared back out right at the shooter. And this time... It'll go all the way out, and it'll wind up at the feet of Stolen Away. Not the feet of Stolen Away, but it's Stolen Away from number 21. I don't have that number. Who? Bo Anderson. Jackson trying to work it into the box. It's what they do. Holster unable to get it, but they get to Oppler. Oppler puts it back in, headed away, as that's what they're going for, but get, winds up right back with Oppler. Oppler out to Zerati. Zerati trying to maybe set up a long shot. No, he's trying to come all the way across, and it's going to be cleared out. Well, not cleared out. It's going to be kicked about 10 yards downfield, and now Spradlin's going to try and fight for it. He's going to lose that battle, but Saltzgaver's going to back him up and take it away, and then it's going to be kicked out of bounds Deflected out of bounds by number three. That is, let me get a number. That is Owen Smith. Throw in. Salzgaver with it now. Looking to get it up to Jackson Larson. Larson puts it out. They've got it to Bo Anderson. Bo trying to follow it. In, and that's going to just, it's going to be deflected just enough by number six. I don't have that number for them either. Let's get that. By Peter Concanon. I expect they will go deep into their bench today. By Peter Concanon, and he's able to flag enough for Martinez to fall on it and then clear it without a shot happening. Jackson able to now come down the far right. Looking for the cross into the center. It's deflected away. And to the feet of Bo Anderson. Now they're looking to go outside. They're looking to get to Jack Anderson. Anderson trying to. He's kind of muscled off the ball. And it'll go over to Jackson as they'll kick it all the way back to the keeper. Bringing it up very, very quickly is Jackson. Zerati with it. Zerati gets rid of it, gets it over to Berenstain. Berenstain trying to dribble to the center, does so. Now he looks across it all the way outside. Looks like it might be Vargas who has it. They were trying to come all the way back across, looking to get it to Zerati again. It's taken away. Salts gave her with it. Salts gave her a little pullback. I almost lost control of it. Gets control of it again. Puts it out. Looking to get Bo Anderson on a run out. And 
again, just able to muscle and just get enough of it so Martinez can run on it before a shot is taken. We're down to 16.50 left in the first half. Here it is five to nothing in favor of Jackson. They have played a, a probably close to flawless. I'm sure their coach would probably rip it apart like all coaches would, but you, they played pretty good. There's a cross. Gantenbein able to knock it free. They had two running on. Not sure if both of them were on side or not. One was Holscher. The other one I do believe, uh, believe was maybe – oh, I'm going to get a good look at him here. It was uh, – Excuse me, Barristain. Another ball put in the box, but this one going to easily roll to Blake Gantenbein. Gantenbein eyeing the punt up with 16 minutes flat, and this thing's got some spin, and it's high. Bounces, oh, about 35 feet in the air. Milliken able to take it down, but unable to get possession of it. Now Holscher's got... Three, uh, two on three. Holster trying to bring in now. A lot of players for Riverton going to get back defensively, and it looks like Jackson will set things up. Going back to Hills, now looking to cross over, deflected by Saltzgaver. He got it to Bo Anderson. Now gets it to Saltzgaver. Saltzgaver trying to put it out there, and it's going to be a foot race. And with maybe half foot worth of speed on him, is number three Smith. Now we got another number we don't know, number 22. That is, oh, we really don't know number 22. That is Vincente Valasagna. Valasagna, he's a freshman. They are going deep, and we ex kind of expected that. We're going to get some substitutions here. Riverton is going to see... A Landon Gold come back on. He's going to come in for Bo Anderson. Riverton just trying to come up the field, unable to do so. We're going to get a foul here. That foul is going to go against I've got it. I've got eyes on him. I'll get in just a second as soon as he turns. But after the free kick, it's going to go out of bounds. The foul is on number 22. That is Valencia, or Villasagna, Vincente Villasagna. And Jackson, after the throw, will look to come down the far side as we go under 14 minutes. Connor's looking at me like, why didn't you come to me? Well, because you didn't have your headset. You always have to be prepared at work. And then you left the camera back. Jackson on the right side. Looking to cross it, Gantbine jumps in front of it again. He's starting to read. Blake's doing a good job of reading these crosses because there is always someone right there on the other end, it seems. And Gantbine is the one able to put an end to it and not let it wind up at the chest, head, or feet. Durango being physical, Holscher. Holscher comes out of it with possession, but has to take the ball backwards. So kind of a win-win there for Riverton. But it's only a matter of time, as we see, as Jackson will start to push back. And they're going the outside. Oppler with it. He's got two on the run with him. Oppler trying to make a move himself. Coming back to center. Crosses it. And the shot is going to be put and saved. Shot there by Villasagna. Came with 12.43 to play in the first. Third save of the day by Blake Gantenbein. But immediately after they get it downfield, Holscher comes away with it. He's going to get to Zerati. Zerati on the outside. Coming down on the near side. Looks across. Gets it to Villasagna. He's going to put a shot on goal. And there's another save. 
by Gantenbein. Twelve oh eight to play is win that game. It's fourth save of the day by Gantenbein. Punt is going to be high. It's going to cross over midfield. It's going to take a big bounce. And uh oh, Gold with a shove here. He might get a little bit of trouble, but they're going to say it's going that direction. It's going Riverton direction. Fouls on number six. Gold did not like it as he, he came away with the shove. Number six is Kane Halpin, a freshman midfielder. No, see, excuse me, it's Peter Cohen Cannon. Uh, looking at the wrong one. Didn't need to go all the way that, that far down to get the number. So Cohen Cannon with the shove. Saltzgave are going to go for broke, it seems, on the shot there. And it was way off target as it was taken from about 40 yards out. It's his second shot of the day. Third for the team. Comes with uh, 10.50 left in the first half. And it's a half that he, coming back at this point in this sport is going to be extremely difficult, if downright impossible, based on the, the these teams and where they're at right now. But can you win the second half? Can you, can you put this out of your head and go, okay, that happened, we didn't play well, and they played – great can we put it out of our head and try and come back um and, and and at least win the half and set it up for the game tomorrow at star valley going down the near side going to go out of bounds and just before it went over the end line so it'll be a throw deep in the corner for jackson but this is a team that if they're going to stew on it they're going to have a long time to sit and think about it because they're all going to be on school buses tomorrow five hour drive or whatever it is to star valley and afton it's not a quick jaunt to play at 2 o'clock, so um, is when the girls will play. Boys at 4. Oh, they change. What are the new times, Kelly? So, regardless, you're doing one of two things when you're making an afternoon round trip in the day. You're either getting home kind of late or you're, getting, or you're leaving kind of early, especially for teenagers. You'd probably rather get home late than wake up early, but. Jackson with the throw, looking to work it from Smith. So it's 11 and 1 for the girls and the boys at 1. Okay, if that is indeed the case, we won't be there with them. We'll be with Lander tomorrow as we wait for Austin to get back. But that means the girls are going to have to leave like at 5 a.m. in the morning, 4 a.m. in the morning. Oh, that's just what you want to hear when you're a teenager. So, and then that also means even though the game, and they'll probably get on the road by 3 o'clock, will the boys, with probably getting some food and nafton or whatnot um, to, to go or what have you, that's still not getting back till 8, 9 o'clock at night. It, yeah, if the weather's good. Now, the weather's going to be great here, but between here and there on a couple different passes and whatnot, we'll see how that goes. We've got 8.30. Left in the first half. Jackson has been down, and both teams going really deep into their bench. Coming on for Riverton is number 13. I'm willing to bet I don't have him. Huh? Colby Brink coming into the game. And now, well, actually just now coming out as well. So both teams going deep into their bench with it being five to nothing here. Salzgate so with Tarango with the seal, and they're going to call Tarango for a foul there? Okay, first foul of the day against Riverton, and that's kind of confusing. He, he's done more physical things <laughs> in other parts of the field that were more warranted of that than that one really was. That just looked like because the guy was physical with Salt Scaver, took it away. But now we're going to get a free kick, and it's Oppler lining it up. He's going to take it, and he's going to nail it. So Oppler with the penalty kick at the 726 mark. Of course, Oppler on the season has taken 
Oh, and he's, he's got some of them, I know, because I think I watched one. Teddy Oppler has uh, six penalty, atten penalty kick attempts. Um, they did not keep whether he made one. I can't imagine he missed all six. And it's now six to nothing. Okay, back. Now we've got guys playing in all sorts of positions because if I'm not mistaken, that's Logan Davis playing in his junior year position more so of defense. Saltzgaver trying to get a break on there off Logan Davis's long kick, unable to do so. Tarango trying to fight for it. Fighting well, actually, for it. Came away with it for a split second, and it wound up with Jackson Larson, but then was stolen. Tarango still fighting for it. They're going to get Tarango with I thought they were going to get, actually, Leo Leosh with a handball, but they don't. They get the foul on Tarango. Kicking it from right around the 50. Milliken misplays it. Now Logan Davis will send it forward, and Gold may have a chance at getting to this first. He's just going to run out of gas on his sprint. Um, Condi, who was with him defensively, didn't start sprinting right at first. Gold able to catch up, but then after sprinting for about 50 yards, it just slowed him down. Now looking to make a move. Logan Davis going to try and step in front of it. He's going to send it out of bounds. It'll be a throw. Trying to, he was trying to keep it away from Beristain. Of course, he had, Beristain has three shots on goal with one goal. Or three shots with one goal. Throwing is going to be to Leosh, and it's going to go over the end line. It will be a goal kick, I think, or will it be a corner? Yeah, it'll be a goal kick. They're all walking in the opposite direction than they would for a corner. We have... 535. Left in the first half and on a kind of a massive error there. Riverton's going to kick the ball out of bounds. They just kicked it just out of the reach of Jackson Larson there um, while trying to clear it. And now it's going to set up nicely for Jackson. Jackson trying to cross, almost taken away by Saltzgaver, but not quite. Villasagna. Whether he's going to get it over to Wetzler. And it's going to go over the end line. It will be a corner. This one is going to be taken by... Uh, it looks like number nine knows coming up for it. Let's see if Wetzler takes it. Wetzler like, looks like it's going to be a short corner, actually. So... Uh, Wessler's good. Yep, Wessler's going to stay down there as well as Bear staying. Now they're going to put it on target. Is number nine. That's Bear staying. Who wound up taking it, but Blake Gambine jumps in front of it before anybody else can get to it. Milliken trying to beat his competition down the field, unable to do so. Jackson will kick it out and it will stay, looks like, with Riverton. And we have a player down. Is that Milliken? Or? Yes. Thank you, Reggie. No, that was Jeff. Oh, thank you, Jeff. <laughs> Unable to see the numbers from there. Milliken down. Looks like he just maybe got a little crap. Maybe got stepped on. Maybe a little bit of, maybe a little bit of something. But he runs it off. He'll set up Logan Davis for the free kick because they are going to call a foul here. So, Logan Davis, best chance to get this into the box, most likely, between him, maybe Hunter, but they want Hunter on the other end of it. So, Logan's going to put it on target. And it's going to be headed once by Jackson, headed a second time. Tarango half-heartedly puts a bicycle kick on it. And they've got it free. Now, looking for the cross and goal by goal. By gold. Lovely assist there by Spradlin. And Gold came on the end of it with 4.05 left in the first. Nice job there by Jamison Spradlin to get on the end of it. 
and to leave this first half with a little bit of some positivity. Start off with a nice ball from about 40 yards out into the box by Logan Davis and then wound up getting headed a couple times by Jackson, then wound up at the feet of Spradlin, who you'd think a young man like that would go for goal. He did not. He put it nicely for gold, and there was absolutely – it went from – Maybe a 50-50 chance Martinez for Jackson could stop Spradlin's to a 99% chance he couldn't stop because Gold was right on the right there on top of him. So it is now six to one, and that's the start of can they can they win the final? I said can they win the second half? Well, can they win the final 45 minutes? Is a question. They haven't allowed a goal since 7:26, and that may not seem like much, but can they win the final 47 minutes and 26 seconds? and get some confidence because tomorrow is a long drive against a team who's going to be ready to play at home in their friendly confines. And chances are, like every time we've ever been out Western soccer season, it's going to be colder than it is here. So a lot of things. So can they get a little confidence going into that? Kelly says they're looking for, at this point, looking at being 1-4-1. One, one. Forget about revenge. Just go out and play well. Um, I hate to say it. Um, two different teams this year. It's it's going to be very interesting. Riverton now close, but not fully back to seemingly full strength with the starters they started the season with, but they're closer. Um, but it's going to be an interesting game tomorrow, unfortunately, or fortunately, actually, because we want to cover uh, Lander as well with Austin out. We will be at Lander with, uh, against Powell in Lander. It'll be me and cameraman Connor coming at you with the pregame show at about probably 1140, 1145. That'll be AM. So Jackson trying to work down the far side with 225 left in the ball game, or left in the first half, excuse me. Holster, I don't know if he meant to slide kick that, but he, he fell to the ground nonetheless. Trying to put it in the box, and it's going to go over the end line for a goal kick. Can't mind. Look for him to go to Davis, but you notice, I hate to say it, but okay, this time he goes a little bit further, going to Brink. And I was about to say, it, it's a little dangerous. The Sharks were lurking there. They've liked to rush up on the short goal kicks and going to put some pressure on Riverton. And right now, that's not really what Riverton needs. Throw in, minute 28 left in the half. Stolen away by Saltzgaver. Tried a long, kind of slow pass, and Saltzgaver just read it, but stolen back by Smith of Jackson before Saltzgaver could really get momentum going his way. Now Jackson looking to counter, wanting to put another nail in it, so to speak, and get revenge for that goal they just gave up as we go under one minute to play here. Ball's going to go out of bounds. It'll be a throw for Riverton. Stolen by Jackson on throw. Holscher with it now. Holscher bringing it to center, trying to get it off to his left. Unable to do so with the pass, so he has to come back to his right to Laosh. Laosh to Smith. Smith is going to lay it out there for Wetzler. Wetzler's going to look to cross, and again, Gantbein well read on it. 22.4 left. As soon as I said that, there was under 22.4. As soon as I started to say it, but long punt is going to fall at midfield. Jackson's going to take it away. We're under 10 seconds, though. Wetzler with it. Back or looking to get to Villasana. One second, and that's the half. So after the first half, it's six to one in favor of the Bronx from Jackson. We'll be right back with the United States Marine Corps Halftime Show here on WIO Today.
For more than 60 years, RTO Point S has been installing quality tires and offering expert vehicle service in Fremont County. With two locations on South Federal and West Main in Riverton, RTO Point S is proud to support our Fremont County student athletes. If you're planning home improvement projects, look no further than Valley Lumber. They provide nothing but the best from lumber, power tools, hardware, paint, plumbing supplies. If you need it, they have it. Valley Lumber at 290 North 2nd Street in Lander. B&M Septic and Excavation offers prompt professional service. Call them today for a quote at 850-2200. They serve far and wide across Fremont County and deep. B&M Septic and Excavation is proud to support Fremont County sports. Overhead Door Company of Riverton and Lander is your premier dealer for quality windows and doors, featuring quality brands like Anderson, Colby, Larson Storm Doors, and more. Overhead Door Company is proud to support our Fremont County student-athletes. For a place, a people, an idea, for right and freedom for liberty and justice for all. For every square inch between fruited plains and spacious skies. Marines fight to win. See all the battles Marines fight to win at marines.com. Shoshone Rose Casino and Hotel is proud to support youth sports in Fremont County. Enjoy a meal at the Deca Guy He restaurant. Deca Guy He is Shoshone for the Eating House. Open daily from 7.30 a.m. until 9 p.m. Try a weekend getaway with the family in one of their comfortable, pet-friendly guest rooms and enjoy the heated swimming pool. Book online at ShoshoneRose.com and remember to support Fremont County youth sports. Go team! Your tax pros at 219 East Main Street in Riverton, Wyoming can handle all your tax needs. Whatever your situation, we know what to do. Call 307-856-2256 today to schedule an appointment. H&R Block is open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. 381 Subs and Salads is the newest addition to Fremont County. They offer salads, sandwiches, ice cream, and lotus drinks. 381 Subs and Salads is located at 702 East Main Street in Riverton. Enjoy fresh made pizza, pasta, calzones, and subs at Perrette's, 519 West Main in Riverton. Open for lunch and dinner Monday through Friday. Closed on weekends. Call 857 7306 to order for pickup or delivery with DoorDash. Perrette's. Midway is at an all-out clear-out for the new 2022 campers with the best price guarantee. Midway has financing with no money down, no payments for the rest of the year. Low, low interest rates on sweet fifth wheel. Dealer incentives up to 25000 on toy haulers. Top dollar on trade-ins and door-to-door -door delivery. It's Midway's all-out clear-out. MidwayCampers.com. Midway, when you expect the best. We're out here at a branding today and there's a lot of hazards going on, and a lot of times you don't have control of that type of an environment. The agricultural industry has a lot of hazards in it. We jump in a vehicle, we run down the road five miles, 10 miles, and most accidents happen within 10 miles of where you live. And so there's really no excuse not to wear your seatbelt. Even though it is a short distance, you need to wear your seat belt in order to preserve uh, your health and your family's well-being at the end of the day. The seat belt is a decision you make individually and you're in control of that. So uh, there's not a lot of excuses for not wearing your seat belt.
Embrace comfort throughout the seasons with Northern Arapaho propane and solid waste. Proudly rooted in the local community, supporting Fremont County year round. Your preferred supplier serving enrolled and non enrolled members. For more information, call 307 463 4185. Community Health Centers of Central Wyoming has locations across Fremont County ready to serve you at Dubois Medical Clinic, Riverton Community Health, and Lander Community Health Pediatrics. We accept all forms of insurance, including Medicaid and Medicare. Are you struggling to get medical care? Ask for their sliding fee scale. From family medicine to pediatrics, Community Health Centers are here to serve you. Call 307-463-7160 or visit chccw.org to schedule your appointment. Your car or truck is an investment. When it needs repairs, you need someone you can trust to do the job right. Take it to Gunners Automotive. They repair all makes and models of cars and trucks, from oil changes to brakes, tires, and more. Gunners Automotive, 856 2288. Papa Murphy's on North Federal in Riverton makes your pizza to order. Order online at papamurphys.com or in store. Delicious, fresh made pizza just the way you want it. Papa Murphy's is a proud supporter of our local Fremont County student-athletes. Welcome back here to Wyo Today, and it is time for the second half between Riverton and Jackson. Your score is 6-1 to one in favor of Jackson. They are just a, 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 they're a very elite-level team, a lot of talent, uh, very polished um, coming in. I mean, you can even see a huge difference. They look great against Lander, too, where they, 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 they beat Lander pretty significantly as well. Um, held them to next to nothing offensively. Um, but the team's better. Um, this Jackson Bronx team has gotten, and I don't mean slightly better from the first game. I mean, they, they went from a great team to an elite team, and that's a pretty big jump. They will start with the ball. We've got a little bit of cloud coverage. Maybe that will help out with the heat on the field. It is right now. Of course, the wind was supposed to kick up as well. It is reading at 75 right now with winds of 15.5 miles per hour or stronger. Jackson looking to push down. Now they start. They started fast. Will they continue to look to start or to go fast? They get it all the way over to Oppler. Oppler kind of alone has a little bit of room to work. He sends it to the center, and the box forced to come out. The Riverton defense does a good job there. Bear staying with it. Looks to make a move towards the box. Now looks to go to his right, bringing it towards the box. Now going all the way over to Smock. Smock gets it back to Oppler. Oppler trying to go in, puts it out, looks to cross it into Hoshler or just cross his feet and get it to him. And Riverton able to kick it out, this being Jones. And it's going to be Jones and Gold trying to get back on two guys. And it's going to be put out to Martinez to put it out of the box or pushed upon Martinez. He does so, and now looking to counter is Jackson. Holsher with it, and he tries to get a little fancy footwork, and he winds up falling down, and it'll give Riverton a chance to get it out to about the 25. Gold will steal it. DeSaltz gave her back to Gold, and Gold just trying to make his way through, unable to do so, gets out towards Hunter Saltzgaver, but he unfortunately reaches the Jackson player first, and they'll send it up looking for Oppler. Logan Davis is going to clear it up to midfield where it'll be picked up by Smock. Smock now, a lot of room to run as Riverton's just retreating on him, so he's able to get some momentum and get some guys down there. They get to Oppler on the side, up to Holscher. Holscher going back to looking for Oppler. They're going to say he kept it in. No, they're going to say he didn't.
So set up the goal kick. Looks like Gantmine going to take this one. Will he take it short is the question. He does take it short, forcing Logan Davis and another to kind of play keep away. And unfortunately, with that short, it gave him enough time. Look who came down. It was Jackson, and they steal it away. Jackson looking to set things up in their own. Offensive end is going to be cleared away, but tracked down by Hills. Going down the right now, looking for a cross. It's intercepted by Tarango, but does wind up falling to Barristan. Barristan to Holschler. Holschler shot. Goal. And Holscher now has the hat trick here at 36.50. He was assisted, by the way, by Barristan. That's his fourth assist of the day. And the 15th shot of the day by Jackson. And it's 7-1. Riverton in an attempt to steal the ball there. They're going to call a foul against number seven. That is Jones. And here comes Jackson again. Jackson 17 going to keep it basically the whole way. Then finally it's taken away from him. They're going to send it out on the far side looking for a cross. It's going to be headed out of bounds or over the end line. It'll set up a corner. Looks like number nine, Berenstain, is going to come over and take the third corner of the day. Going to be curving inward, and it's just going to be hit in the wrong way, and Gantenbein is going to be able to dive on it. He had it well read. They were trying to go right into that low corner, a little low kick. And now Gold's got a potential. Nope, is taken away as he misstruck it. And it'll go back in the other direction with how much time left, Connor? 35-20. Left in the match here. Remember, catch a breakdown of the weekend games. Uh, we will have uh, some coverage of the Star Valley game as we'll get some notes from it and whatnot. We will have that in the Ranger on Wednesday and in the Lander Journal and well, in Fremont County Sports in the Ranger. Pick up a Ranger for that. And in Fremont County Sports will be Lander Valley in their game. Crossing pass by Oppler, perfectly placed. Just nobody really there to get on the end of it. Now another crossing pass, and Gantenbein finally is going to have to just jump on it. but of the Lander Valley Powell game. Reminder, another thing to look forward to here on Wyo Today Media Sports coverage is going to be the Lobos and the Raiders in baseball. Here's a move, and it's nicely done in goal. Nicely done by Brerenstein. He kind of took that one himself. That was his four shot. Excuse me. He just got his first assist on the last one. Four shot. He now has his second goal of the day, and he just really made his way. Now on two shots so far in the second half, they are perfect as far as they've scored on both. And it's eight to one. Checking in is going to be Hull. He's going to come in for Jackson Larson now. Whistle, there's the kickoff, immediately taken away by Barristain. Barristain trying to put it out there for Oppler. Can he get to it? He does, but it's stolen away by the second defender to reach him, and it's going to be put out of bounds by Tarango. Coming over for the throw in is Smock. Smock throws it in to Condi. They're going to get up to Barristain. Barristain looking to put it out there for Oppler. Does put it out for him. Oppler looking to cross it, and it's going to be kicked out 
and it will be out of bounds for a throw for Jackson. So off the throw in Oppler with it. Oppler getting it over to Smock. Smock looking to go down towards the end line. Turns back around, goes up to Oppler. Oppler puts it out there. I think he was expecting either Smock or um, number 13, Vargas, to make a run on it. Neither did. And now Riverton had some assault scares trying to get the gold and had been possibly a two on one taken away, though. And here they come in a hurry. Is Jackson. It's going to be cleared out to Jones now, though. Taken away from him, but Saltzgaver's going to put it up, and it wouldn't matter. Goal was so far off sides, it wasn't funny. Jackson is going to cross it over now and look to try and get out of midfield. It's going to go out of bounds, and it'll be a throw for Riverton with 32-30 left in the match. Throw in. They're going to fight for it as they bring it down. Long shot by Hoshler. Hoshler. This one no good. Stolen away, though. Oppler now with it. Very quickly. He's going to leave it behind for Hoshler, and he's going to miss again. This time wide left and maybe a little bit high. That, those two, though, are Holschler's only two misses of the day. He had three shots and three goals to get that trick. Now he's got three goals on five shots. Still a great day. Milliken will now come in. He will come in for Jones. Davis with it now in the midfield. Brown the 30. They're going to try and put it out for Logan, and it's going to go out of bounds over to Jackson. Jackson goes far side of the field, trying to bring it up. They're going to hit number nine. Oppler with it, and, yeah, that's what he's going to do every time. Oppler gets in the box and puts it in. Nine to one now. Oppler now on six shots has himself the hat trick. Barristain with the assist again, number nine. Came with 31-01. Left in the second. As the second assist for Barristain. And they're now three for five here in the second. And now Riverton just going to boom it downfield. Salt Scaver with it. Looking for Gold. He's got an open goal. Gold's trying to get over, and he just shoves him. <laughs> and I think they're going to call him for it. They do. <laughs> he got kind of cut off, and he tried to get around him, couldn't, and uh, put a little bit of a shove. So it'll be technically a free kick from basically goal kick area. Bring it down, they get Oppler at midfield. Oppler turns. Crosses it over to 13. Trying to lay eyes on who 13 is. That's Yer Vargas. Oh, dumb. I just don't have it in order because he was a sub. Looking to cross it over. They get it over to Oppler. Oppler makes one miss. Logan Davis with a little bit trying to be physical with him. He leaves it back for Smock. Smock looking to cross it. Header is just off target.
We're going to try and lay eyes on who that header was as Riverton will look to try and get to it. It's going to go all the way to Martinez, though, and come back. So that header was an attempt by, I want to say it's Barristan, but we'll take a look here in just a second. He's wanting it. It's Barristan. It was Barristan with the header. He's going to get on top of it, put it in, Goal. And it's now 10 to 1. Yeah. Barrison now has the hat trick as well. Three goals for Oppler, Holscher, Barristain, and one goal for Beninga. Assists have been tallied by quite a few, actually. Beninga has one, um, Oppler has one. Um, Wetzler has an assist. Holsler has an assist. Smock has an assist. And number nine, Berenson, of course, with two. So they've assisted on all but two goals. Berenson's, uh, Berenson got the assist there, and that assist was by, I'm trying to lay eyes on who it was, assisted by is it was by 18 so that's actually his second Beninga's second and they've both gotten some rest here and Jackson quickly pushing up um, the Jackson JV girls I'm guessing are done as Jackson has wound up the girls are and the girls team I'm sure maybe JV and varsity maybe not have shown up here at the field and are watching intently as they are going to be very happy with their varsity gentlemen counterparts. Crossover to Smock. Smock looking to get free. Takes a shot and saved. By Blake Gantenbein. That was Smock's first shot of the day. And it was deflected. It actually went out. So it will be a corner kick. Corner kick is punched out at first by Gantenbein. Goes off the head of a Riverton player. And then they finally get rid of it. They got it to Milliken. Milliken to Saltzgaver. Saltzgaver trying to find gold desperately and unable to do so. Immediately back, Holscher now with it. Holscher's going to let to put it on goal. Doesn't do so, and it winds up getting deflected out. We'll have a corner again. Okay, that was Berenstein with the last corner. It'll be him with the corner again. This is now going to be the fifth corner of the day. And this one's going to be cleared out as soon as it's taken. Martinez come way out of his box and just casually kick it back upfield. Jackson working down the far side. Wetzler with it, gets it up to, I do believe that is Barristain. Not 100% sure, but now it's with Holschler. Holschler coming across, going to go all the way over to Leosh. Leosh coming back up, goes to Smock. Smock trying to get back in to... Holscher, Holscher trying to get free of the defender and get a shot. Now he's just going to center it in, and it's just laying there and just whiffed. Um, just missed it a little bit. Did number 22, Villasana. Unable to get a full foot on it, and it's going to go wide. That was the 20th attempt, though, of the day, or shot attempt by Jackson. Actually, no, that was the 23rd. I'm missing some shots there. We will figure that out when we write the article. But nonetheless, it has been 23-4 to four on shots on goal. No shots on goal, much like for the girls in the second half. Difference, girls tied it up. And um, 
This one is a long pass and just misses get, winding up being there for a target. Smock with it now. He comes free. He's going to try and put it on net, and he's going to miss way wide. That is Smock's second shot of the day. 24th shot of the day for Jackson. It comes with... 24-35. Can't hear you. 24-35. Left in the game. Gambine going to try and clear it out, trying to get Logan Davis, does so. Nice little punt there. They get it up to Saltzgaver. He tries to let it go behind him and then run on it, and he does a good job with it. Unfortunately, it's partially deflected, just holds up a little bit. Jackson comes away with it, and that's kind of all they generally need. They're looking for Holscher on a long run out, and Gantenbein just comes out and grabs it about halfway, out, about halfway through his entire box. There, had no choice. They were trying really their first overly long pass of the day. Try and catch everybody maybe napping a bit. Don't know if you're going to catch anybody napping when your offense has put up 10 goals in a game and there's still over half the second half left. Off the goal kick, two Riverton players had a chance to get control of it. They failed to do so, and it will be Jackson coming back the other way. Now down towards the end of the box, looking to cross, and it's just going to be way too high off the cross by uh, Brerstein. It's going to go out now, Smock with it. Smock looking to cross it over, does so to center to Concanon. And they will look reset. They'll kick it all the way out to Vasquez. Now looking to come back in. Looking for the cross here. It's going to go out and it'll be a corner kick. And let's see who's going to take it. Looks like number two, maybe. And it looks like he's been over there a couple times and kind of been weighed off, waved off by a guy. But the guy who's waved him off is no longer in the game right now. So it will be a corner kick by Wetzler. Wetzler puts it way outside for a bicycle attempt by Holschler. That, that was interesting. He misses it nonetheless, kicks it way too high and off off target. His seventh shot of the day, though. That one not on goal, of course. Goal kick is Riverton's going to try and slowly work out. They wind up with Davis. Davis putting a nice ball potentially out there for Saltzgaver. Saltzgaver does get to it. He gets, he hits gold, or excuse me, Larson. Shot, no good. The rebound is just missed. Oh. <laughs> so Anderson is stopped there. As the first save of the second half for for Martinez. Larson misses it, and then on the putback, Jackson Larson badly misses it with point blank. He had the rebound attempt. So it'll be, it'll be Jackson Larson's first shot of the day, and uh, for that matter, Jack Anderson's first shot of the day. And the first shots of the second half for Riverton. But golden opportunity there to get it to 10 to 2 and just missed on the rear. And he knew it as he went flying in and just smacked the uh, crossbar up top. Jackson looking to counter. They've done so every single time that Riverton has done anything overly positive offensively. They've looked to squash kind of any kind of momentum, even though they're up by nine. They're going to put out for Holscher. Holscher looking to cross it back, does so. Nobody really there as far as with a shot for it. They're going to try and feed it over to number six, Con Cannon, and he's going to lose it. You know, he's going to roll to Gantenbein, who will look to clear it out. Saltzgaver trying to play very, very physical right now. He's running into a double team, but he's not giving up. Good effort there by Saltzgaver. And we'll have a substitution now. 
It'll be Hills coming back in. He'll come in for Holschler. Holscher on the day has three goals on six shots. He has one assist. And also coming in is going to be Offler. He's going to come back in. He's coming in for Wetzler. Wetzler's day so far, one shot with one assist. Oppler, of course, on six shots has three goals as well. And one assist. Him and Holscher actually mirror each other completely today. Ball is going to be whistled for a foul here. It looks like Logan Davis is going to take the set piece. They're going to take it from about 23 yards plus the angle, probably about 32, 33 yards away in total. They're going to go short. They go to Jack Anderson on the right side. Anderson trying to keep it, does so. And it's finally going to be tapped out of bounds by... Jackson. Davis, it looks like he's going to throw. Landon Gold is checking back in. Let's see who he's coming for. He's coming for Logan Davis. Throw in by Gold. Bouncing between two Jackson defenders and finally taking away Jack Anderson doing a good job with it. And he's going to get shoved out of bounds. Um, the ball's going to go over, just keeping him away from it, but pretty significant shove there. Going to go over the end line and will be a goal kick with 18-10 left in the match here. Riverton now Jackson, or excuse me, Jackson pushing down the near side. They're going to rub the player off, and they're going to try and get Saltzgaver on a break. Saltzgaver fighting with 24. We're going to have to get, we're losing, we're getting more spots than we can have. 24 is most likely Bruno Silva, JV player normally. It might be one of the guys off JV too, though, because they do have that. But I do believe it's just a guy off JV. Thrown in after Saltzgaver forced them to kick it out of bounds. And now it's a fight for possession. Jackson may come away with it. A lot of little pointless headers in there by number eight. And they finally get it down the ground, and they do take it. Coming down the far right side, that's Oppler. Oppler trying to feed Villasagna. Villasagna crosses over to 16. That's Laosh. Leosh looking to put it in the middle. There's a guy there. Header is just off target. Header by Villasagna there. That's his fourth attempt at a goal today. He has had zero of them. 25th shot of the day. So a couple substitutions going to or a substitution going to happen here for Riverton number twenty two. That's Clawson. He's coming in. He is going to come in and get that's number eight. He is going to come in and get number eight. Right? Don't have him. Nonetheless, off the goal kick, though, taken away. I do believe that's Oppler with it. Oppler going to try and feed the middle. Does so, but Riverton, well done there, playing team defense. Able to at least get in the way of it, but they don't get it clear. And now they're going to come down the right side, looking to push is Vargas. It's going to go out of bounds off of Riverton. Throw in is to Oppler, back to Vargas. Vargas looking to cross it. Smith trying to make a run on there, but well played by Jack Anderson. Go out of bounds, though, but unfortunately it will be a corner kick. Let's see who's going to take this. Substitution now coming in. It's going to be Beninga for 
Goert, not Goert, excuse me, for 17 for Smock. Thought that said number 12. So I'm going to guess the corner kicks gun would normally be taken by two, but he's not in. And, well, normally be taken by number nine. He's not in. Number two took it after number nine. He's not in. Here's the corner. Kind of really low. Put on goal, though, and it's good. Yes, sir. Number eight with the score off the corner. Trying to lay eyes on the assist here. Comes with 14-4. So Hills, right as he came back in. I've got, I'm with you, I've got 11 to 1 on 26 shots. So I have no idea who got that assist. I know it was on the corner. We'll get it in a while, but here comes Jackson yet again. Okay. Come on, show me the number, kid. Thirteen. Vargas with the assist, his first of the day on that goal. Taking the corner. Now it's going to go out of bounds. Jackson with it. 11 scores here. Six to one and now five to nothing in the second half. Later across it is Jackson. They've got a, eight guys back trying to stop Villasana looking to get it in. Shot blocked. Beninga trying to get another one for the day. He tries to go up for the header there and it's just hanging out here. It's going to go out of bounds. Goal kick. With 13-24. Coming back in will be, uh, or coming in will be Goert. And Hosler, because why not? And Vargas. Excuse me, Vargas wasn't out. Vargas is coming out now. Also coming out will be Hills and Villasana. Short goal kick. Going to be cleared out somewhat to Gold. Gold goes back on a pass. Now they're going to look to go to Saltzgaver. It's intercepted, though. Riverton does get a hold of it for a second, but Oppler able to get a hold of it. Then taken right back by Jones. Oppler with it. Little one touch pass over to somebody. Uh, I think he came right back in. Vargas back in. Say so he came out, came right back. No, excuse me. That's no, he is in there and he gets it over to Goert and it goes out of bounds. It'll be a throw. Taking Oppler with it. He's gonna look to cross it, puts it up there. Header is off the Top of the bar by Hosler. That is Hosler's seventh shot of the day. Jackson trying to work it down, going low. It's going to go out of bounds. It'll be a throw for Jackson. Laosh is going to take it. Laosh throws in to Cone Cannon. Back to Laosh. Laosh to Oppler. Oppler to Laosh. Trying to come down the far side. Stolen by Gold, but it's going to go out of bounds. Last touch by his foot. It'll be a throw in for. Jackson, they're going to throw it all the way into the box. They were looking for a sprinting Smith there, but Gantt might be able to get to it first. And punts it downfield well over the head of everybody. That was a cannon, and they're going to let it go all the way back to Martinez, and he'll pick it up. 
Rolls out to Leosh. Leosh up to Gort. Now it's going to wind up with Hoshler, and he just can't get to it, but it is going to be a corner kick. As it was last touched by Riverton, it was it was open mouth goal. All all Hoshler had to do was get to it, but he just couldn't. Last touched by I think maybe Gantenbein. It'll set a corner here. This is going to be the first time we've seen. I think we saw him a couple times against Lander, but it'll be seventh corner of the day. This one taken by Oppler goes in and sent right back out. So Oppler will do this again for corner kick number eight. So one thing they haven't scored off of really. This one put right towards the goal, and as soon as I say that. With 9.50 left. Con Cannon, number six, with the goal. That's his first shot, first goal. It will be Oppler's second assist of the day. And it's 12 to 1 with 9.50 left in the game. Saltzgaver is going to kick this one off. Kickoff is backwards, of course. Back towards the goal. And now they're going to look to try and get Jackson Larson on a run out here on the right side. It's going to go out of bounds, so it will be a throw. Throw in is to gold. Back to Jackson. Jackson with a shot and just misses um, the outside post. Now, in fairness, Martinez did have that well played. Second shot of the day for Larson. Seventh shot of the day for Riverton. Taking away off the kick there and looking to get, but then a boomer sent, and now they've got someone running on to it. They've got Goer trying to get to it. He has to wait, though. He couldn't play it just as he wanted to on the run, and Jackson looking to take a shot here. High by number 13. That is Vargas. That is his first shot of the day. All right, we've been informed by uh, Reggie and, and the referee signaling they're going to keep the clock running. So evidently a, a, a mercy rule kicks in at like a, either 11 or maybe it's 10 or more with a certain amount of time. They're going to shoot again. This one is going to be taken by – is number three or number two, one of the two? It's number three. That was Smith. That was his first shot of the day, number 28. And we have uh, 7.39 with a running clock. Now, in soccer, not like it's going to matter a, whole, matter a whole lot. There's not a whole lot of stoppages anyway. So the only thing we're going to not stop for is potentially, I don't even know. They're going to put another shot on or at least attempt to. Trying to lay eyes on who just took that. I want to say it might be. It's number six. That's Cone Cannon with the shot. He missed. Ball's going to go out of bounds. We're going to get some substitutions now. Number eight. Coming on. For Riverton.
Cooper coming in for Riverton. His first time in the game today. As they are going deep into benches, and they have been for quite some time, actually. Trying to come down the side is number 11. That is Zorati. Zorati into the box. Well, he's thinking about it, and he makes three guys miss, and he's got a goal. Zorati, no assist on that. Kind of did it all himself with six, well, say about how much, what's the clock say, Connor? Is it five or four or what? Five. So we'll say it happened with probably about 5.56 left. We have to guess on that. Again, Zorati with his, his first goal of the day. On the 29th shot attempt by Jackson, and they now lead 13 to 1. On they have 15, they have more shots than they had in the first half, and I would not have bet that would happen. So, kickoff by Riverton. This is also one of those where I think they want to see everybody's trying to get a score. That's not going to happen all the time. I don't necessarily mind it at the same point in time because these guys work hard as well, and they just don't get the same opportunities because they're not the best. So when, when you got a chance to do it, why not do it? Trying to find Tarango on the far side. Looking across at Tarango doesn't, and it's going to get taken away and sent out of bounds, this time by number four for them. That would be Erwin Condi. And now here they come trying to go downfield, taken away, and we're going to get a foul on Cooper, who just came in. It'll be the fifth foul of the day against Riverton. They'll set up a kick. They've, they've, for the most part, let them play pretty physical. A couple of calls both ways have been kind of eh as far as going more towards the calling light stuff than what they've been calling most of the day. Free kick taken by Jackson. going to be headed back by Riverton. Stolen away by Jackson, though, and Jackson's going to work it outside to Zerati again. Zerati's going to move. He's going to look to center, and there's a header just outside. I'm trying to lay eyes on who had that. They tried two different uh, players, tried to get their head on it. I do believe one was Smith. The other one was Goert, and it was Smith. Try to get his head. He had his second shot of the day. And it would be the 30th shot of the day for the team. And Three. how much time is left, Connor? 310. How much time is left? 38. Uh, you see, you don't even agree with yourself. Shut up. <laughs> uh, having a little fun with crossover. They're trying to set up a header, and it's going to fall harmlessly. Um, everything fell harmlessly except for the Jackson player. He kind of hit a little bit hard. They'll now kick it back, looking to get it to Martinez to reset things. Saltz gave her, giving a run on it, and they'll go the other direction. Will Martinez with 240 left in the match here. Now Jackson with a little bit of a break. They're going to look to cross it here or go into – oh, just missed on a cross and a, trying to set it up for a shot. And Riverton will come away with it, but it goes out of bounds. Riverton had control over it, went out of bounds. Jackson looking to put it back in. There's a header again, this by Smith again. And he's just inconsolable as he misses again on the header. Two minutes left in the match here. I just made sure I could see it there. So Tarango now going to come out. And stolen away by Smith. Smith just seemingly desperate when he wants to get a goal here. He's played quite a bit. He's got four Jackson. He's got three shots. on uh, Three shots. That's it. Uh, nothing else. Um, statistically speaking. 
Jackson trying to set up yet another shot, looking for shot number 32. It is at the feet of Vargas. Back to Vargas. Vargas with a long one and stopped by Gantenbein. Riverton, Hunter Saltzgaver trying to give run, just can't get there in time to get a shot on. They get it out, and now here comes Jackson. One last push here under a minute to play. Cross, they're trying to get it to Smith, and he gets nothing on it. Does get a shot off, but got nothing on it. But they've got it back, and now Riverton looking to clear it. 33 seconds left here in this this match. Thank you, Connor. They can't hear you. Ha -ha. Uh, 24 seconds left. It's going to go out of bounds. It'll be a throw-in for Jackson. What was that? How much time is left? Uh, we're getting low, and there's a Tim. They're trying to get to Smith again. Smith's going to give it up with five seconds left, and they're going to look for him again. It's not there, but they do allow a goal. As the horn sounds, I do believe that's 12 who put that in. That would be Goert. Goert with a shot and the goal as things come to an end. And it will be your final here will be 14 to 1 in favor of Jackson. We'll be right back with the Click It or Ticket post game show here on Wire Today. When you purchase your car, do you know if you got the best payment possible? The answer is probably no. Oftentimes, your loan is packed with additional charges that can drive your monthly payment higher than it should be, costing you thousands of dollars more for your car. Hi, this is Patty, and here is your second chance to get the payment you deserve. Visit Atlantic City Federal Credit Union today for a courtesy loan review. We've helped our members save money by refinancing their vehicle with us. Now it's your turn. Open your eyes to a credit union. Atlantic City Federal Credit Union. Riverton's Hampton Inn and Suites is proud to sponsor our youth athletics in Fremont County. Fremont County School Athletics provide our youth timeless experiences and lessons that can lead to success for life. Setting goals, teamwork, and hard work make young athletes into good citizens. When repairs are complete after a collision, you expect your car, SUV, or truck to look like new. That's the service you'll receive at Stork Auto Body in Riverton. Professionalism and meticulous attention to detail. You can depend on Stork Auto Body, 841 Miniweb Avenue, Riverton. The choice is yours. Sutherland's Friends of the Family Plus Consumer Credit Card lets you choose from 5% off instantly at the register or special financing on qualifying purchases. That means no forms, no waiting, no rebates. You can choose 5% off instantly with your Sutherland's Credit Card. Got a big project? Choose special financing. The choice is yours with Sutherland's Friends of the Family Plus Consumer Credit Card. Subject to credit approval, minimum monthly payment required. See store for details. Only at Sutherland's. At Teton Therapy, our people make the difference. You can live pain free. The amazing staff at Teton Therapy can help in Lander and Riverton. Welcome to the Click It or Ticket Post Game Show here on Wire Today. Um, there's not a whole lot to be said um, 
as far as what we just witnessed, 14-1 to final. And to tell you how weird high school sports can be, this is a team that lost to Kelly Walsh 2-1. to um, Kelly Walsh lost, uh, then comes out at Kelly Walsh. Um, the only win of the season that far for Kelly Walsh comes out, beats Riverton 4 nothing, and then this happens. This team got significantly better since they played Lander. I don't know. On paper, and that's the great part about sports, on paper really doesn't matter. Because on paper, I'll tell you, I've, I've watched both teams. I've now seen this team from Jackson twice. I've seen Kelly Walsh once. And I would, if you if this was Vegas and you took odds, I would bet all day long on Jackson with the spread, unless it just got insane. So we're going to start off looking at the score of 14-1. We're going to start on the Jackson Hole side of the ledger, the Jackson Bronx side. They have 14 goals on 33 shots. Uh, 10, of, 10 of those were assisted today. Actually, I think maybe 11 of those were assisted. Let's see here. Are we missing an assist? I don't think so. But one, two, three. Yeah, 11 of those were actually assisted. Um, your leading scorers were Oppler, Beristain, and Holscher each getting the hat trick, each with three. No one had two, but Hill, Zerati, Beninga, Goert, and Concanon, each with one. As far as your leading assist getter, Beninga had two, Oppler had two, and Beristain had two. Um, the keeper had to make two saves, one coming in the first half, the other with 21.50 in the second half. Um, by the first one by and second one, or excuse me, the first one, uh, was on Landon Gold's attempt, and then second one was on Jack Anderson's. As far as on the Riverton side, they have one goal on seven shots and with one assist. Of course, that goal came at 4.05 left in the first half, scored by Landon Goal, assisted by Spradlin. And our Papa Murphy's player of the game, and sorry to all the people in Jackson, we are homers here, so we've been glad to have you, but we are going to go ahead and give that to uh, Jack uh, to Landon Goal for getting the goal. And then we're going to give our uh, Gatorade player of the game slash play of the game to Jamison Spradlin. Um, Jamison Spradlin able to really show some maturity level for a young guy, a young guy on the team, um, and a new player on the varsity to just kind of – he let the game slow down. He, he, You would expect the guy, of how much he plays and whatnot, he'd take the shot. He didn't. He let it slow down. He got the pass off, and he took it from being maybe a 50-50, maybe even 60-40 in his favor of the goal going in to when they, Lane and Goal got it and where he got it. It was basically 100% that it was going to score. So some positives there, just not few and far between both – um, the girls and the boys both having some hard time with possession. Um, better defensive night, obviously, for the girls as they finish up. Lady Wolverines and Lady Bronx tie up at one. Your final score again here is 14-1 to one in favor of the Bronx. So tomorrow, this Riverton squad, both ladies and men, will be playing in Star Valley. But we will be... At Lander, as we will bring in the Lander Valley Tigers, Lead Tigers and Tigers versus the Powell Panthers. We'll see you tomorrow for Kevin Shields. And well, I should say for that, that's me. For Cameraman Connor, this is Kevin Shields saying good night. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you next time here on Wire Today. From the wide open open spaces to the canyon near you. Wyoming.com is reaching more homes and businesses than ever before. For more than 25 years, we've aimed to provide the best internet and phone service to meet the needs of our customers all across the great state of Wyoming. Now it's getting even better. Wyoming.com, expanding to an area near you. Wyoming.com, we're out there.